Stannis, he got first. Hey, Thunder, still doing the uh, ooh, ooh up. <laughs> Diggs, BTW, welcome in. As much as me, how about you? I'll be hate math. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, people are popping in right at the start here. So what do you know about group homomorphisms? Uh, that they exist, and that's about it. <laughs> wow. Um, what heck am I doing? I guess I'll just look for a question online. I don't think there's nothing in my Discord that really needs to be addressed, I don't think. Nah. Hey, Milk. It's more than most humans. That's fair, you know. Where'd my modern algebra textbook go? <laughs> um. I mean, a, a homo, more, a homo more, actually, no, there's isomorphism too. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I know it's some kind of relation between two different like groups, like they have some type of similarity or something, but I don't really know. Saving up channel points for evil Ulab. Oh god. <laughs> At least I can start thinking about how that's gonna look. Evil Uwop. I, I yeah, I mean I I I guess I know how I can do that. One says that G is isomorphic to G if there exists an isomorphism theta from G. <laughs> it's a great definition right there. I mean, I guess they're just saying, like, that's like a phrasing thing, I guess. Rather than trying to define isomorphism. Uh, that is an answer. Isomorphisms are unique up to isom... Okay. Can't say I know what that means, but... I understand the indi the individual words in that sentence. Hey, Amudi. AP stats for part 8 is a... Matter so to use random samples. I found that since the study may not have used random samples, the results study cannot be generalized to the population. Do patients seem similar to those used in the study? Ooh. This is, oh god, this is going to be one of those weird interpretive questions. So uh, let's see what it is. The in anterior cruciate ligament? Oh, ACL. Okay, well, I, I know ACL. It's one of the ligaments that helps stabilize the knee. Surgery is often recommended if the ACL is completely torn, and recovery time for the surgery can be lengthy. Medical Center developed a new surgical procedure designed to reduce the average recovery time from the surgery. To test the effectiveness of the new procedure, a study was conducted in which 210 patients needing surgery to repair a torn ACL were randomly assigned to receive either the standard procedure or the new procedure. Are, are, are you in both my Twitch chat and my YouTube chat? You're, you're trying to, to, to double up on the haze right now? You only get one, all right? And that's the rule. Haze are in short supply these days. Um, Got to ration them, you know? Yeah, you know, it, with the whole economy being ha how it is. No, I don't know. Just making stuff up. Uh, based on the design of the study, we, would it would a statistically significant result allow the medical center to conclude? 
Wait, what? I would think so. Because you're comparing people who got one type of surgery versus the other type. ACT tomorrow talked about complex numbers today and went, I mean, it's useful in the ACT. Some students went, we're taking that tomorrow. <laughs> were they asking you like why they're, they're useful? I feel like that's honestly the, the best response when a student asks why well, you have to learn something. It's like, oh, well, you're going to need it for this test or to get this degree. So it's a lot more like relevant to them, at least. That's not the answer they're probably looking for. There we go. I don't think they care about phase and LRC circuits. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> Not that I know a bunch about LRC circuits, but <laughs> I just know they're used generally in electrical engineering a lot. Where, where does it say patients seem similar to those used in the study? Oh, so uh, four patients similar to those in the study. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the point is that the random assignment of type of surgery is sufficient. It's not exactly ethical to go around and tear people's ACLs to get a better random sample. Or if someone already has a torn ACL, to tear their other ACL also, so you can do both types of surgery on the same person. <laughs> Why do anything else when you can do algebra? <laughs> oh god. I, I, I like to do most of the things aside from algebra. Love tearing people? Oh yeah, Thunder? I mean, I think it'd be great for <laughs> the researchers that in this study, then. You know, the researchers are like, we need a bunch of people with torn a ACL stat, and Thunder's like, I'm on it. This goes out with, like, a hammer or something. <laughs> I guess a hammer, <laughs> I don't know if a hammer's the best tool for the job, but I, I'm no expert.
or you can only take the patients. They're given. Interpret the um, interpret whether a patient is whether a patient is um, do they talk about the complex? I guess really not. Okay. The issue is that's, that's kind of interpretive, so you, you, you never exactly know what's going on, but I think that's kind of the explanation for that question. Rings and fields equivalence relations? There you go, Yanis. It has three comments. Let's just see what it is. Someone tell me how to read it and what it means. Claim. There are exactly four equivalence classes and therefore... What? I think we need some context here. This makes no sense to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's only four equivalence classes in the universe. What is this whole... Oh, wait. Is that integers mod two, except those that are congruent to p? What? I don't know how to read that. <laughs> I agree with this person. I don't know how to read this. I think it already has an answer, but this notation is super confusing. This is the field with four elements. Okay. Like chicken scratch to you as well. All right, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not alone here. Ooh, Alkalina does algebra too, or algebra as well. I mean, these two field of polynomials. Oh, okay, so this isn't like integers mod two then. Coefficients that are only zero or one. So maybe polynomials with coefficients that are mod two. Yeah, this is stuff that I, I definitely don't know anything about. Okay, I was curious what that question was asking. Then saying x squared plus x plus 1 now equals 0. <laughs> okay. I can see where that's happening. I can't, I couldn't tell you why. So p is not, okay, so this p is not a prime, it's a polynomial.
I probably just shouldn't be looking at this question because it, it, I, I don't have nearly enough foundation for this. Just uh, was curious to uh, look at it. I'm sure Yanis was dying because I was doing stats. <laughs> I'll uh, generate a few responses anyway, so. Hey, Tiger Tiger Fearful Symmetry. Thanks for following uh, a few hours ago. How's it going? Call you Dave? <laughs> What's wrong with Tiger Tiger Fearful Symmetry? It's much easier to, to say. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll call you Dave, I guess. <laughs> I'm just making fun. Welcome in, though. <laughs> Thank you, Th Thunder, for you know. Giving Dave a, a proper welcome with my weird emotes. Oh, uh, alright. Okay, I'm down to the bottom of this subreddit. In a puzzle last few days, it's been bending your brain. Like, what type of puzzle? Hey, Anders. Um, ugh. I'll ask math. You're here for the streak? <laughs> I get it. Probably shouldn't share solutions. Oh, okay. Yeah, then no worries, Dave. If you'd rather just uh, work in it uh, without outside input. Jane Street Current Puzzle. I'll withhold like a comment on it. Is there... Oh yeah, no, no, no. Uh, go do do that, Anders. You shriek Anders for some reason. Oh, that's annoying. Is it this robot capture the flag one? Aaron and Aaron. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh. A single move after the flag is placed if they wish. So I'll try not to say what I'm thinking yeah, so I don't like mess with your uh working on the puzzle on your own, but Any move they make is without knowledge of what the other robot is doing. A single move? Huh. Play a fixed distance along the detected angle of theta, assuming the otherwise optimal play. Okay. So Aaron has some kind of offset for what the actual angle is. To run the probability that Aaron will win? Huh. That's a tough one. I, 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 I actually, I'm not sure. Even though I did have an idea, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't immediately even know what to say about this one anyway. I 
Here goes one over root two out along theta, but you ain't certain. So I guess Aaron with an ease problem knows what direction to go with some error. Wait, oh, a fake. Oh, never mind. It's not an error. Aaron always goes the same distance along theta, even if it's potentially not optimal. So a Aaron, Aaron with an E knows what direction to go, but the distance is fixed. Okay. Whereas Aaron knows with an A knows the distance, but not the direction. I guess I can... <laughs> Deal with anything, try to write code to simulate it. Please get a rough idea. They say otherwise optimal play. Which... I feel like it's a little open to interpretation, maybe? Or I just don't get it. It's an interesting question, though. It's the probability density function for the theta line. Thanks for looking, Thunder. is defined as 2x. Bertrand's paradox. Yeah, I, I have kind of a thought for what might happen. I, for, as far as your PDF question for 2x, I don't understand how that would work. But I, I don't know if I've completely wrapped my brain around this yet. What does uniform distribution even mean? Oh, really? Is that what Bertrand's... Is there an issue with uniform di distributions? Bertrand's Paradox. Problem with the classical interpretation of probability theory. Be careful. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll show it on, on the screen. Since I'm like you already know this. Um, principle of indifference? principle that I live my life by. Huh. This might, I think Wikipedia explanation is going to be probably a little beyond me. Oh, you're good, Dave. Um, I, I guess, yeah, I, um, I'll introduce myself because you, you, you are new. There's a few new people from last stream, too. Um, I'm Dom. I, my, my, my kind of my usual shtick is I do math help streams and sometimes gaming streams. 
so I normally do math help Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, but t tomorrow I'm busy, so I'm doing my math stream today instead. So normally on Wednesdays and Fridays I do stream games. Um, and if you're new to the Twitch community, uh, I if, if you're interested in more math streamers, there's a whole list of ones that I can recommend the highest who I've known for the longest. Um, there's many more out there than just this list, but those ones who like I know the best. So if you're looking for more math streams, there's people I can like re recommend to you. Yeah, no worries. And of course, no obligation to do anything at all, but just as you mentioned, you're you're new. It's like a little like niche on Twitch that I'd love to like grow more. So it's, if someone new comes around, I like to. Um, try and like introduce a bit more. Oh yeah, and I do dual stream to YouTube as well. So if you hear me talking to someone who's not in the Twitch chat, I'm talking to uh, they're probably in the in the YouTube chat. Um oh someone posted a question to my Discord. Oh this Oh god, we got some physics here. Let's see if we can figure it out. Is this... I... This question has me stumped. The first part is hard because I forget what approach I need to take. Okay. So... At first I thought that this... <laughs> It was a drawing of something else, but I don't know, it's just a play with buckets. Um, so Easter homework. A builder ties two identical buckets, P and Q, to the ends of a light, inextensible rope. So this looks a little bit physics-y off the bat, but let's see if we can do it anyway. He hangs the rope over a smooth beam so that the buckets hang in equilibrium. Oh, it's not even a pulley, it's just a beam. Okay. The buckets are each of mass 0.6 kilograms. State the magnitude of the tension in the rope. I would think that's just the mass, like, or, um, the force due to gravity. Because if the force due to gravity is pulling them down, then the thing is holding them up is the tension that must be exactly opposite. State the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the beam by the rope. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I think I know how to do A at least. The bucket Q is held at rest while a stone of mass 0.2 kilograms is placed inside it. The system is then released from rest and in the subsequent motion, bucket Q moves vertically downwards with the stone inside. Perform an equation of motion for each bucket. Show the magnitude of tension in the rope. During the motion is 6.72 newtons. Correct to three significant figures. Oh god. This induction is down. That's as far as I want to go. <laughs> For part B, Q is definitely going to go down. Same thing with where it's exerted on the beam by the rope. Ooh. All right, so B is going to get a little trickier. Let's, let's start with A. You can see how far we can get, though. I, I, why is this called Easter homework? This has nothing to do with Easter, unless these buckets are filled with Easter eggs. Oh, goodbye, marker. Okay, so we have a uh, 0.6 kg and 0.6 kg, and the system is at rest. So, 
I would say that the force... Oh wait, uh, we have P and Q. So, um, just look at, looking at the gravity, I would say that um, it's going to be acceleration times mass, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 times 0.6 mass. Uh, need a calculator. Hey, Epsom. Uh, it seems more physics-y, but I think it's something that I can handle, so we're doing it anyway. Physics I'm not too good with, but I'd love to be better at it. 5.886. I guess one thing that's always confusing about sig, sig figs is whether you round only at the very end or if you round at each step of your calculation. I guess I'll round here. Uh, and the same will be over here. So do we want it to find... Do we want to find gravity to be down, or do we want to find gravity to be up? It's not that important, as long as we're consistent. I guess we'll let gravity be down. Um, so we want to state the magnitude of the tension in the rope. So... I imagine the tension in the rope is going to be the exact opposite of these two forces added up. So let's make gravity be down. That means it's tension. Tension is just force, right? And I, 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 there isn't a definition of tension that I'm not aware of. Maybe say F. Maybe FR for force of the rope. I don't know. 5.89 plus 5.89. Is that mental math? Can I do that? I can't. I, I mean, I could. I just don't want to. Can a force be negative? Yeah. Because you, you can have forces in opposing directions. Cancel each other out. That's what's happening here. Um, 11.78, which is 11.8 if we do three sig figs. So that's what I want to say is the answer for part A. Um, when the magnitude induction force exerted on the beam by the rope. Okay, so... Oh, wait, no, that's A1, and now we're doing A2. So the force is pulling down on the beam. <laughs> this is where, like, things get weird, because I'm relative to the buckets, the rope is pulling up. Relative to the beam, the rope is pulling down. Um, the rope is pulling down at, I guess I was saying, minus 11.8. So the beam is doing the opposite force. Force. Oh wait, no. Uh, I'm not. They're not asking for force of the beam. This is just the the first part is just the answer right here. Well, in the magnitude, it, magnitude doesn't have a sign. Pulls down the beam. Okay, so that's my interpretation for part A. 
For part B, what do we want? Bucket Q is held at rest while a stone of mass 0.2 kilograms is placed inside it. System is then released from rest. Do the rounding at the end only? Uh, you're probably right, Dave. Um, I guess for A, we're kind of already at the end of the calculations anyway. It's probably not going to make that big of a difference. From an equation of motion for each bucket. Okay, so I think I know what to do with B. The magnitude of the tension of the rope is 6.72 newtons. Wait. Oh, uh, the tension of the rope is 6.72 newtons. That seems like we don't add these together. Maybe I should go to Google. Because 6.72 seems reasonable to get if you're only talking about one of the buckets. But if we're adding weight, I'd expect the total tension to go up, right? Hey, uh, man, I just call you man. Uh, <laughs> we just did part A, but I realized I may have done it wrong, so I'm trying to Google it right now. I'm not too good with, with, with physics. Tension in rope due to gravity. Should I just Google the exact question? Some more advanced version. Tension is just the amount of force measured in newtons, not kg or lb. Wasn't lb force? Um, I don't know if you saw the original question, Linux physics. I, I guess with, with the situation at hand, I don't know if the tension comes from... It seems like per b implies the tension is just from one of the buckets. But my interpretation is that the tension should be the mass of the buckets times acceleration added together. But the number you're supposed to get from part B, things do change a bit. But, um... Well, yeah. Hey, yeah, you call it force of tension? Wait, yeah, so I, that's, that's not my question, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Dave, so I agree with you. I, I think... So, okay. Let me, let me show the, the whiteboard, too. So each of the buckets in part A weighs 0.6 kilograms. So I got the force due to gravity on each of the buckets, and I added those two together, thinking that would be the tension in the rope at 5.89 for each of the buckets individually. Um, in part B, you add a 0.2 kilogram weight to Q, and they say the tension in the rope is then 6 point something, which is definitely a lot less than my, my final answer for the tension in the rope for part A. Um, and so since I get 6 point something, I'm thinking they just want the tension in one part of the rope, which is weird to me. That's why I think I'm mis misunderstanding tension here.
So I might just Google the exact problem here in a second. If the second bucket is not there and that the rope is pegged to the ceiling, you'll get the same amount of tension. Okay, so you're saying the same. So. Would we? I, that doesn't make sense to me. Because we have two buckets here that are both pulling down. I, I would think it's more like if you have just the one rope pegged to the ceiling, I think it's more like you have one bucket with 1.2 kilograms, like their mass is added together. Yeah, so I'm saying the rope is light here, so we don't have to worry about like um, any calculus or anything for rope with a mass. Seemingly simple stuff is a bit more complicated. <laughs> like, this is a pretty basic situation in physics, I would think, but it's like, it's not that easy for me to wrap my head around it. Uh, they say this is just a beam, so I don't think this rotates. It's not a pulley. The rope is going to slide along it, though, so I guess maybe not a, or you know, part B, we're, we're going to get sliding happening, so, but I think it's without friction, so it may as well be a pulley. So what is this builder doing by by the way? Is he even like doing his job? <laughs> um a builder ties two identical buckets E and Q to the ends of a light and extensible rope. You do need to add them, is what you're saying, Gary? Just that... Oh, they don't give the answers here. Um, it's just that if you do add them, you get 11 point something for the tension in the rope. But then in part B, they make one of the buckets heavier. Uh, but they say the tension of the rope is 6.7, which is a lot less than 11. <laughs> Hook's Law, isn't that for springs? So uh, that's where my confusion is here. So it does seem like you're not supposed to add them. Um, I don't get why though. That's what I'm trying to 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 figure out. Oh, is it because of the beam? Uh, that's not my question. 
are limitless that's, that's not my question is like I, I I get that they're opposite forces well oh or or, or maybe uh, that is my question it's, it's just I'm not understanding what you're or I didn't understand what you're saying like So I mean, I get that they're in equilibrium, but I, I guess what you're saying is that, well, wouldn't that mean that it's zero tension in the rope? <laughs> I know they're opposite forces. My, my theory for the explanation here... ...is that... Yes, this bucket does put a tension of 5.89 newtons on the rope, but by the time the rope gets up on top of the beam here, the, uh, this, this same tension does not carry over to the other half of the rope over here, because the beam halfway through is already pulling up on it. So this half of the rope has the 5.89 tension, and this half of the rope has a 5.89 tension. But because the beam is halfway through, that tension doesn't carry over from one side of the rope to the other. So the entire rope is just under 5.89 on each end. So it's... the, the beam acts... Uh, okay, this, this is my, like, it's, like, it's like we have two separate f fixed points, and the tension in, in each of the, rope, of the ropes is the same. I think that's how they intend you to think about this, and each of the ropes only has a 5.89 tension. Like, this beam's acting like the two fixed points, I think. Problem is, with physics, it's horrible. <laughs> I agree, but... Someone asked uh, about it in my Discord, so I want to at least give him some type of response here. Any small segment of the rope with a tension measuring spring. Okay, yeah, Linux. I think that's the that's a nice way of saying. I think the conclusion that I just came to, um, where it's like parts of the not every part of the rope is affected by this force due to gravity. Okay. So let's see if our numbers match for part B then, if we can get that 6.72 answer. Actually, well, let's correct my work up here first. <laughs> together um we can look at oops the tension Oh, and actually, Yanis, if you're not already, I think Penn Center is doing that algebra reading group right now. So if, if you're not a fan of the physics, <laughs> you should go over to Penn Center's stream because they're talking about algebra like right this instant.
It's actually a subject like theoretical physics that used a lot of mathematical methods, kind of rigorous. Oh, okay. Hey, math professor. Maybe in steps algebra, one step physics. <laughs> hey, math professor, is there something else that you prefer to be called the math professor or just be called that? I don't mind anything, but I figured I'd check. Let's get attention on one side of the rope. It's a long explanation for what's apparently a very simple situation that isn't simple to, to me, at least. Um, So 5.89 newtons. Okay. <laughs> I think that's my response for A1. Thunder? Oh yeah, it probably is. That's fine? Okay, it sounds good. I started doing mathematical physics, BSc, but dropped the physics part. It was way too hard. TBF maths is pretty much beyond me too. Oh, fair enough. Do you still the local convention of textbooks? That's the only problem. Not so easy to derive. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, um, I, I'm interested in, re in studying physics again. I'm much more interested in it than algebra. I just am studying algebra because I think it's a good idea too, but I don't particularly want to. <laughs> so magnitude of the tension in the rope. Uh, we said 5.89. Okay, so what about two? Uh, state the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the beam by the rope. Okay, so this is where we get to add things together. <laughs> God. What a, the, the, it's a simple question, but the, it has a lot of subtleties to it that I didn't expect. Um, so the rope is independently exerting two forces of 5.89 newtons on the beam. And so it, it's, there's a weird situation where even the, the tension is pulling up relative to the buckets, but the rope is still pulling down relative to the beam. So I think we just get to add these two together and call it a downward force. Oh my god. My brain thinks faster than my hand can write. Five point eight nine newtons plus five point eight nine newtons equals what did I say it was eleven point nine. Uh eleven point eight. Uh, tension is like force that causes the rope to extend or compress. It's an inextensible rope, though. <laughs> but I, I think I understand what you mean, where like it would cause it to extend. Imagine the beam being held up by a tension measuring spring attached to the ceiling. Oh, no, Linux. Am I not right about part two? Or are you just memeing? I, I, I can't tell if I'm actually right or not with this question. I'm right? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so what does part B say? So now we're we're upping the mass of Q by 0.2 kg. So we're gonna need acceleration due to, well, not due, I mean, it will be due to gravity, but it's gonna have like a counter force to it. We need to figure out the net acceleration. I assume this is not calculus-based physics as well. Um, so niche entertainment, I love the internet. <laughs> There's not a lot of us out there, but we are out there. Okay, so this is gonna be weird, but we're not symmetric. So isn't the tension on one side gonna be different from the tension on the other side, or how how is part B going to work here?
So I assume that the, the 6.72 comes from um, Q, the heavier bucket, because we expect the tension to be a little bit more than 5.8. So this one is pulling down at um, 9.81 times 0.8, and hopefully that's 6.72. Oh, you know what? I have a command just for this, don't I? 9.81 times points, uh, 0.8. No! So, oh, are we going to do like an averaging thing or something? Was that 7.85? So what's... 6.7 is about halfway. Well, that's good. No, not necessarily. So how do we go from these individual forces to the tension of the rope being 6.72 then? We're not in equilibrium, so it's not as clean anymore. I assume that's the reason why. Yeah, that's how smart I am, Thunder. That was me ty typing that response back to you manually, not a bot. <laughs> By forming an equation of motion for each bucket. I guess we should start with that part. I don't know how it's going to help us figure the tension in the rope. Oh, maybe it's going to be what I was seeing on that one website where tension is equal to like Force due to gravity minus force due to acceleration, or you know, whatever. I don't know. Let's start with Q. Um, so Q's acceleration. Well, the force the, the force is acting on Q. We have excel or we have gravity pulling it down, and then P pulling it. Up. So the force on Q is equal to, and if we're defining gravity as down, we say subtract out the force due to gravity. So that's 5.89 minus. 7.85 um come on I, I i can do this mentally right is that it Suva? Yeah, no, so in the next step, I'm going to do F equals MA. That 9.81 is so yucky. Oh, well, you should do the, the acceleration due to gravity in feet per second squared. It's much better. All right, see you, Dave. Thanks so much for, for coming by. 5.89 minus 7.85. Minus, well, 1.96? Okay, I was off. Uh, I should have known it was 9. I, I didn't think, think before in that it should be 9. Okay, and so we know the total force acting on Q, so let's get Q's acceleration. Um, Q's mass is 0.8. Oh, okay, I need the calculator again. <laughs> One point nine six. It's, does eight go into that? I feel like it does. Two point four. Right? No, it doesn't. It's fourteen squared, right? Or one point four squared? I already forgot what the answer was. Two point four five.
So that's the net acceleration of Q. Put a little Q there. Okay. So that means uh, Q's motion is going to be, is it just one half times minus 2.45 T squared? Because there's no initial velocity, there's no initial position. And so it's basically just free fall, but with gravity being reduced. So I think this is valid. One point two three. Um, and I think. Oh, so P might. We have to do, I was hoping that we could just take the positive version of that and actually maybe we can. I was wondering if P might be accelerating differently because it's lighter. Um, but they should be moving at the same velocity, just opposite directions, right? If one was going faster than the other, that means like P was being like yanked up or something. And I don't think that's the... Uh, That's what's happening here. So even without thinking about it too hard, we'll say just positive 1.23 t squared. Um, now, how do we figure out the tension in the rope? <laughs> mg plus ma. So... That's... mg, we know, is 5.8... Well, do we? Yeah, I thought I'd have an idea for this. I actually realized that's maybe not so good. What is 1.23? What if we add up everything? 1.23 times the mass of P plus um, well actually it wouldn't be 1.23. That's the net, isn't it? Actually, oh yeah, so I mean 1.23 times the mass of P plus or minus because it's negative 1.23 times the mass of Q. Just what is that? 246. That's not right. Is it the tension? Is it the mass due to Q? Well, or is it maybe 9.81 times 0.8 minus 9.81 1.962 minus 1. Point, what? 
I don't know why I'm putting a negative sign in front for a second. Six point six two. Six point seven two. Dang it. <sighs> um Thunder, I'm trying to do B part one. I thought I found the net ex I, th I thought I found the acceleration of each bucket. It's I, or I still think I have. I don't know how we get the tension in the rope now though. Like I I've made equations of motions for each bucket. Well you try alright. thinking about it right now it doesn't matter where q is on its journey because the acceleration to gravity is always the same just to get this out of my head it's not going to be the average of these two right Seven, right. I want six point seven two. the mass we want to know acceleration and tension the smaller mass is subject to two forces tension and gravity where tension is the larger magnitude the smaller one right so tension is larger because the smaller one gets pulled up the resultant force r will be directed upward and have magnitude equals to the difference between tension and gravity Two equations with three unknowns. What? I didn't think you'd do a system of two equations. Exceptions equal. Yeah, so this makes sense. So I'm my mistake is assuming the tension in the rope. Okay. Stop spoiling your save. It's like, you're you're gonna get a save anyway, Thunder, ju just for trying. Actually, yeah, you know, if it puts your 
your mind at ease there. You use tap exact as equation for your upcoming mechanics tests. Oh, interesting. And so do you do the system of equations thing as well? T minus MG equals MA and MG minus T equals MA for pulleys. Okay. The true save is when returning from physics to algebra. <laughs> oh, geez. I mean, I've spent a lot of time on this question, but I don't have any others that are waiting. But I'm definitely not going to do algebra while Penn Center is actively streaming the algebra re reading group. <laughs> uh, maybe once Penn Center ends streams or switches to a different activity. Um, I, I, I need to, let me just do the same setup and then I'll work through the rest of the logic for myself. Maybe I, I'm trying to read all the steps ahead of time, but he's not live anymore. Oh, you think you got it? Um, oh yeah. Pen is not live. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll do, um, Algebra, I said this problem, assuming n n no one else uh, asks a question. The answer should be 6.72 for the tension in the rope. Hell yeah. Uh, are you able to either send me your work or help me, or, or help me, like, figure it out? work it's a bit unneat okay sounds good actually in that case i'll leave the browser here Hey, Muhammad. What's up? Hey, SG1. Your phone died? Oh no. Okay. Um you'll just type it. Movement of objects that changes directions. It sounds like you're talking about like a, a, a vector equation, Yeri. But if yesterday's stream, I still don't know, Yanis. <laughs> uh, 
Um, after I read it out to Zach, they apparently said that one of them was a professor who was trying to challenge their students who were the other three people. I, I don't really believe that either, though. I, I, I don't know. I still don't know what's up with them. <laughs> Equations 0.8g minus t equals 0.8a. Hey, quit. Chapter probability of single events. Okay. So you're saying 0.8g minus t equals 0.8a. So that's for q. And for p, we have the same thing. But with 0.6. Should the ordering be reversed here? Should t go first? Oh, it, you, you made T go first. I just can't read. Sorry. Wait, why do I write G? <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's G. This is A. Yes. There. Um, because of the way they accelerate, right? School they taught us to approximate with parts of a circle. Really? Uh, yeah, sure. Quit. Go, go, go ahead and type it out there in chat. Or if it's a bit harder to type, you can put a screenshot in my Discord. If you add the equations together, you get A equals 1.4, where G equals 9.8. So let's add these together as Thunder says. The T goes away. And then uh, G is 9.81. Now we just solve this for A. Oh wait, you're saying... Okay, yeah, we will get A equals... We get 1.4 back. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Um, so that's the acceleration. So the tension in the rope... Is that... <laughs> 0 0.8 times 1.4? One point, no, it's not. That's 1.12. We're expecting 2 or 6.72, right? Oh, wait, tension is T. Never mind. We have to get T now. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I remember these tension qu questions from college. Hey, Bessie. Uh, I don't mind. I, I, don't, I don't know if I love them, but I definitely don't mind them. Um, I, I don't remember them very well, so thankfully Thunder has come to the rescue here. We solved that equation for t. Okay. <laughs> hey, these big fat nuts. Welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Pretty simple question. You just need some explaining. Oh yeah, are you quit on YouTube? Six. 
Wait. Oh. What did I do wrong? Ooh, three watch streak. Nice, Anders. Rebuilding. Uh, Jacko, can I send you a question? Yeah, sure. Muhammad, I can definitely help out with that uh, once I'm through with this question. Why am I getting uh, 6.08 and not 6.72? Oops. Did I not plug it in? Wait, what did I just do? Oh, there we go. I don't know. Okay, I get too small. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I do get the, the right answer now. <laughs> it's the important part. Okay. I think that's part B or B part one. This is, uh, it was. I can't read their name entirely because I'm in streamer mode. It's in my Discord, though. Uh, I, I think it's Roboto in the math help forum. Uh, work out and give an answer in standard form. So that's working in scientific notation. Um, yeah, if it wasn't you who just joined, I you can put the image in my Discord. Um, so these big fat nuts, um, I, I'm going to wrap up this question that's on the screen. I'm going to do Muhammad's probability question and then you're next. Actually, the scientific notation, can I just do that one quickly? Uh, how do you do that? Good question. I feel like it's just not going to change, or at least with like the rounding. Sketch the magnetic field of force exerted on the beam by the rope while the motion takes place. Okay, can I just knock out part two quick here and then try and move on with the cue? Magnitude of the force. Wait, at state. I said sketch. State the magnitude of the force exerted on the beam by the rope while the motion takes place. Is this a constant? It's just both the buckets added together for part two. Okay. Let's just do that quick and then we'll uh, move on with this question. Um, 0.6 times 9.81 plus 0.8 times 9.81, whatever that is. Just 2t? Oh, is that it too? I'm doing it this way because this way that I, that makes sense to, to me at least. 13.762? <laughs> or... 13.7? Wouldn't it be 2t? These big fat nuts? Yeah, I, I, I said I'm going to get to you. Oh, we get slightly different things. I just did the weight of the buckets times the acceleration due to gravity and added them. Oh, I'll type as well. Assortment? Um, like a variety of things. Like you can have an assortment of like bagels or an assortment of like pastries, I guess. Like desserts. That, that's what I think of w w with an assortment. Ah. 
6.72 times 2. 13.44. Oh, okay, that means Pinsetter's going to get a variety of questions, like a bunch of them. Purple paint sketch on how to do this? Okay, <laughs> I'm here for it. In that case, um, I'm going to erase the bottom line. I'm going to take a screenshot of, of the whiteboard. Uh, Penn Center is a great teacher, yeah. And then I'm going to, while Thunder's doing that, I'm going to move on to uh, Muhammad's question. I need to take a screenshot first so I can send it. Okay, so I just put a screenshot of my whiteboard in the Discord. Oh gosh. We got more physics from Jacobin. I'm not gonna know how to do that offhand. Um I, I, I can try with it, but um Jacobin is in the Discord. I, I I'm not gonna know that. I or like um I I'm, I'm not gonna be very good at that problem. Um. Okay. So Muhammad's question. Hundred algebra questions in a row. <laughs> From ITA. I don't know what that is. Even though I was working on a, a, phys a physics problem here, I'm not good with, with physics, so I may be able to figure out the problem that you just said, but um, I'm warning you now that there's a good chance I won't be able to. Drawing an ace of spades, a heart, or a club, a picture card, a non-picture card. We can definitely do this one. Oh, shoot. Don't do that. Okay, I just hit the wrong hotkey. Okay. So, Muhammad, um, we'll do Thunder. Th thanks for, for doing that. I'll, I'll look at it after this one. So, you have a deck of 52 playing cards. Part one is the Ace of Spades. So, for part one, we have 52 possible outcomes, and we have one desirable outcome. Because the Ace of Spades is just one card, there's, there's only one card that is the Ace of Spades. So the probability there is 1 out of 52. For part 2, um, we have a heart or a club. Well, whenever they say or, you should think of doing addition. So we still have 52 possible outcomes. Uh, just working on the hearts first. There's 13 hearts in each deck of cards, so we do 13 out of 52. Now let's worry about the clubs. There's another 13 clubs out of the 52 cards. So we add these together to get 26 out of 52, which is just one half. Um, picture card. 
for part three. Okay, so we have to do some counting here. Um, the picture cards or the face cards, as uh, we call them more commonly, are Jack, Queen, King, and Ace, right? Jack, King, Queen, Ace, yeah. So there's four pi picture cards, or the, um, there's the Jack, King, Queen, and Ace, and each of them have hearts, clubs, spades, or diamonds. So we do four times four is 16. So there's 16 total uh, face cards out of 52. Um, how does that simplify? Four over 13. So that's your probability there for part three. Then a non-face card. How did you get 13 for hearts? Uh, that's something I just know offhand, I guess. <laughs> Or it, when you're doing a, uh, when you're in a probability class and they're asking about decks of cards, um, it's helpful to remember there's thirteen of each suit. Um, in a deck of cards, there's thirteen hearts, thirteen clubs, thirteen diamonds, and thirteen spades. It's just, this is just good information to, to know. Uh, unfortunately, they kind of expect you to, to know that. Um, so part four are non-picture cards. So we can do a little trick here where we just did the probability for a picture card. And if they want to ask us for not a picture card, and probability speak, not means you do one minus that probability. So let's take whatever we got in part three and do one minus that, and that's our new one. One minus four over 13. Uh, let's get a common denominator. 13 over 13 minus four over 13 equals nine over 13. And that's just the answer there. So does that make sense? Are there any other questions, Mohammed? No? Okay, sounds good. Thanks for, for the question. Yeah, so the, the crappy part about pro probability is classes is they often expect you to just know that stuff about decks of cards. Um, so, you know, for someone like me, I grew up playing card games, so I already knew that offhand, but if you didn't, then these questions are like an extra struggle. Okay. Let me look at what thunder. Posted here. So you're just saying that the tension or the beam is exerting twice the tension. I don't understand why. Oh, I guess since there's maybe a cancellation with the buckets traveling in opposite directions, that's what it, okay, fair enough, I guess. I'm willing to accept it. Um, yeah, you, you you are next. I was just taking a quick break to finish up the one from before this. Um, I'm going to relay this image to the person, and then we are going to go on to your scientific notation one. Oh, 
Okay. So these big fat nuts. You want to do some scientific notation math, which this one, like this, the first number is so much bigger than the other one. Like, oh wait, is standard form okay? So here's where I'm not good on the terminology. Is standard form like not scientific notation? It's just a regular number, like written out every digit. No, that's that's a giant number though. They don't think you write out two hundred di digits or whatever it is. I assume standard form is sign or standard form of a number. They expect you to write out 199 digits? Or... What? <laughs> I feel like I'm misunderstanding the terminology here. This meme? <laughs> Stooky! Thank you so much! Hey, Phobos! How's the stream, Stooky? Um, we got a couple questions in queue here, so I'm trying to, like, get through them. I'm currently struggling with scientific no no notation. Uh... <laughs> Our, uh, I'm trying to figure out what exactly standard form is. Because I saw one website claiming that stand. Okay, this website claims the opposite. I assume we want it in scientific no notation. Stream is good, but you're sleepy AF apparently. Oh, well. <laughs> Hope you get some, some sleep then. If, if you want to just head out, like, please do as well. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to treat standard form as scientific notation here. Because there's no way they want you to write out 199 digits. Um, the issue is that 3 times 10 to the 199 is such a bigger number than 2 times 10 to the 101 that I feel like you just don't even bother writing 2 times 10 to the 101. So we can cheat here and use Wolfram Alpha to make sure that I'm not completely crazy. But yeah, these big fat nuts, I'm not exactly sure. Like this is, I feel like I would just write this to be honest if you don't want to lose anything. Because this is the answer here. If you want to combine them into one thing, it's 300 with, what, 98 zeros or something? And then a 2. And then times 10 to the 199. <laughs> so I'm not sure what to do with this question, these big fat nuts. Um, you do sound like a bit of a scholar, but... I... I would either keep it like this, or I'd say that this last part is so insignificant compared to the first number that we just chop it off. And this is the answer. So I, I, I don't know, if there's something more to it, please let me know. Maybe I should type to you, since uh, you said your internet is uh, bad. Alternative is writing 3.0. Do we count significant figures? Ooh, that's a good question, Mina. Um, we don't have that context though, so I I, I don't know. Okay, so I, I typed to the person who asked the question to try and ask for some more clarity in case it's not coming through well on stream. Um, and there was someone...
Okay, so there's nothing else in the Twitch chat, I don't think. So let me look at, there's a, I think we're on to the last qu question in, that's actually being asked from Jacko, Jacko, Jacobin in the Discord. This is, it's a very fit, oh, you deleted it? Um, oh, you re reposted it, or no. If you are still around and you want me to at least look at it, I'm happy to try with it. But yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do your your, your physics qu question there. Uh, so maybe we're actually through the two people who are asking questions currently. Um, Okay, I, I'm just like checking around to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Okay, I think I missed a few things in the Twitch chat in that mayhem, but I don't think anything that urgent or yeah. Let me get so, so, some wall. Okay. Um, I'm 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 thinking about working out some kind of queue system to help me track who asks questions in what order, <laughs> and what the questions actually are. So I don't need to like dig through my own chat, but it's going to be a little complex to do it how I want to do it. So for now, I'm just mentally keeping the queue, I guess. Machine for two hours. <laughs> yes, you want to do algebra so bad. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay. So, these big fat nuts. Um, I, I typed a response uh, just up above that message in chat. I don't understand exactly what we want from this question. So, like, the number written out entirely is just right here. Like, I can even... So, right. The issue with that is that there's like 99 zeros you would have to write if you put it back in standard form. <laughs> so it'd be 3.00000, like 99 of them, a 2, and then times... What? But there must be a typo in the question or something. Like, are you sure you, 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 you wrote it right? Um, I still have it pasted. Okay. Let me bring it back up. So... Now, if these are... Oh! Wait, are these... No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be for multiplication. I don't know how you would get that. <laughs> Two oh one instead of Oh, okay, yeah. That makes sense then. Uh if you want you came on, I guess. Okay. So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna type the these big fat nuts because um I can't not laugh when I say that. Must have been a typo in the exponent of the or in the problem. I don't mind the name. <laughs> Don't want to text to his big fat nuts? I, I do. Uh, sure, Mohammed.
Uh, sure, Mina. I think it's the, uh, the, the only, like, pending question anyway, so... Once we've wrapped up these fat nuts, <laughs> I'll have a bit of time to do other things. I guess it's random, Muhammad. No typo. The answer doesn't make any sense, then. Make any sense. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, uh, Nick Ship, I completely agree. We're, we're trying to figure out if there's a typo. Okay. You sent it? All right, sounds good. So This question makes much more sense if it's like this. Ten to the one ninety nine to ten to the one two oh one. Okay, cool. Hey Frederick. Okay. So what we do here is we factor out the common term, which is ten to the one ninety nine. As Nick Shep said over on YouTube, we get 3 plus 2 times 10 to the 2. This math we know how, how, how to do. Let's start by saying that um, 10 squared is 100. And that 2 times 100 is 200. And that 3 plus 200 is 203. And now 203 in scientific notation, move the decimal to the left twice, and then multiply by 10 squared, because we moved it twice. So I'm going to do that in a separate step here, I guess. Now we multiply the 10 to the 189 by the 10 squared, which means the exponents add. So we get 2.03 times 10 to the 201, 189 plus 2. And that's our answer there. Hey, Brownie man. I'm just doing some scientific notation math. Um, and it looks like we'll have a limit problem from Mina in a minute. Um, you want to sleep now, Thunder? All right, well, thanks so much for the help on that, um, um, on both these problems. Actually, yeah, you get even an, another save. Um, and then, who all was pointing out that, that there was a typo? <laughs> uh, Yanis, Stuki. 
Okay, cool. The innocence to key. And Ian Stuckey. Okay. These big fat nuts. Um, Schlein Schlithic Schlo Squish. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can find... Okay. Oh, gosh. What is this limit question? Let me pull it up. Hey, Bob. In algebra, there are limits too? Really? Actually, you have too many sig figs? <laughs> I, I do, you're right, Brownie Man. <laughs> it's not my problem, though. Pencil or pen? Uh, I don't know, whatever you're, you're more comfortable with, I guess. What, what, what would a limit do in algebra? All right, so Mina, is this just a for fun problem or are you asking for help with this? Category. Uh, we can look at this too quickly. It right, would be considered an operation. Don't learn category theory. I have no plans on doing it. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what any of this is talking about. Um, rationalize first, Nick Shep says. That could be a good idea. Um, well, what do you mean, Harvey? This is definitely a daisy. It's just, it's a new update. You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Remember, you have solved it long ago and it was fun. You forget the key thing to solve. Um, the suggestion is to try rationalizing it. You truly hate the new update. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I heard there's some like nice beards involved in it. Are you saying like you actually, or, or, or are you like saying you actually do hate the, the new update in Daisy? Uh, I, I actually, I really like the idea of, of rationalizing it. Let's see what happens there. Character cast by is great. <laughs> okay. Get rid of this. No more applied math, you know? We just want... random math done for no good reason. That's the real math. Oh god. This thing needs to get sprayed soon. I'm too lazy to do it right now, though. Okay. So we have the limit, it's n goes to infinity. Um, of a times root 2n squared plus n plus 1 minus bn. Plus n plus 1 minus bn equals 2. We want to know what a squared plus b squared is. And, um, as Nick Shep over on YouTube said, I think rationalizing it is going to give us 
um, something helpful here. Do you want to go the least applied math category theory at your back? You think it's quite useful? With oh, okay. No worries, th these big fat, fat nuts. Uh, thank you for, for, for the question. So yeah, let's try um, multiplying that by um, the conjugate. Do you call it a conjugate when it's a radical? I, I, I always say conjugate because it's like the conjugate of a complex number. I don't actually know if that's the right term, though. Just whatever that is, but you reverse the sign. So we get um, a squared, 2n squared plus n plus 1, plus b squared n squared, over a root 2n squared plus n plus 1, plus b n equals 2. Um, the degree on top is 2, the degree on the bottom is 1. Is this limit going to blow up? Is that what's happening here? Doesn't seem good. Oh wait, this is a minus. Oops, 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 oops. So, oops. Depends on A and B, I guess. Okay. Man, oh yeah, thank you, Bradley. Well, oh okay. So I guess maybe let's try and group together the n squareds on top, because I guess a and b are going to be forced to do something special in order for this to converge. Um, 2a squared minus b squared n squared plus n plus 1. Is that going to be equal to 0? That's my bet. Oh, uh, a squared and... Oh, no. We get a squared over here. I mean, maybe they're not though. Hmm. Uh, factor n on both. Uh, is it what I just did? Or do you mean somewhere else, Bob? You think I'm right, Mina? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the degree on the bottom is 1, which means this thing has, like, the n squared is the issue. It's going to cause limit to blow up unless the coefficient is 0. Um... But we also, we need the tower to come out to be 2, which means the leading coefficient on top has to be 2. The leading coefficient on the bottom has to be 1, or some, you know, multiple of that. So, do we get a system of two equations here? Like, uh, can we say that a squared over 2a plus b? Or root 2a plus b equals 2? Is that what's happening here? Divide n by the numerator and the denominator? Oh, I guess you could do that too. Can I make it more clear what's happening? Well, I, I guess I'm mentally doing that. 
Like, that's what I think this result is for the limit. It's like I'm doing the leading coefficient trick when the degree on top is equal to degree on bottom, and I think that's based on dividing out the, the n. But like, what the heck is happening here? That looks good. Okay. Now solve. I mean, yeah, just to figure out how we solve. Uh, I guess it looks. I guess let's uh, say that b squared equals two a squared. Or I want to. One half b squared equals a squared. How about that? And let's bring it over here. Actually, I should just do the opposite way. b is equal to root two a squared. Was well, it plus or minus? Ooh, I'm gonna ignore the plus or minus because. <laughs> oh yeah, if it's minus, that gives us no solution. Okay, good. Okay, plug it in over here root 2a plus, now that becomes root 2a. It's 2. Um, that becomes a squared over 2 root 2a equals 2. Uh, are, is it safe to cancel the a? I feel like we shouldn't cancel the a. So let's multiply that over to the other side. Or root 2a is subtracted over So we get a, a minus 4 root 2 equals 0. So a equals 0 or 4 root 2. I think a equals 0, can we call it trivial? Uh, yeah, because that'd be a equals 0 and b equals 0, which isn't right. So a is 4 root 2, I think. Uh, with the negative solution, I'm, I'm, I think the negative solution is invalid here because you get 2 root a minus 2 root a, and so you don't get anything from that for the value of a. Like there's an issue with 0 in the denominator. Doesn't have rationale, at least. Uh, so if a is 4 root 2, then b is. Uh, Eight, so it's root two times a. Does so we can like Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like this is right. It's work. <laughs> you divided it yourself. It was not given in the problem. All right. See you, Yanis. Sorry we're, we're going to have to go to algebra while you were awake. <laughs> if I have time, though, I will. Uh, I'm saying that B is 8, Nick Shep. Based on, or if A is 4 root 2, then B is 8. I divided it myself? I mean, I guess that's true, Bob, you're right. In the original problem, it would be valid. Um, but how do we deal with that? Well, we can mainly check if A equals zero and B equals zero, you don't get two for your limit. Uh, if b is minus root 2a, can we make any conclusion there? I 
I don't know. That one might be dangerous. Like, then we might get a solution. Uh, next stream will be on Tuesday. Quick. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I need to like fidget in order to to think. So it's my fidgeting of choice right now. I can hold it away from the mic though. I was living like right there was probably bad for the mic. I mean, is this a solution? Because like, maybe we don't have to. It's just only a squared plus b squared. I assume there's only one solution to this, and if this works, we can just not question it. Uh. So I guess I would take that. What? All right. What am I listening to? Um. Can we do? Cannot be negative because otherwise the other question gives you two positive values multiplied by something that goes to infinity. Then it can't be two. All right. I'll take it. Whatever justifies the math that I already did. <laughs> Feel like holding it away somehow makes it louder. Really? Oh, sorry. Uh, so you're like multiplying and dividing by n. Uh, oh man, lopidols sounds kind of disgusting though. It might not actually help you to force lopidols to work. I, I don't know. It, it 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 might work, but oh, I'm sorry, Nick Chef. I didn't realize the problem is covering up my work. Uh. Sorry, yeah, I said A is 4 root 2 and B is 8. I completely, I didn't realize the problem was covering it. That, that, that's why you, oops. So yeah, I mean, I think that the answer, as you said, is, you know, we just square these and add it. So 32 plus 64 is 96, as you said. We're trying to make sure that this process is right. Uh, oh wait, 98? Did I do my, my, my mental math wrong? 16 times 2 is 32, and I think it's 96. So I, I feel like this is right. I mean, we could even plug it into Wolfram and make Wolfram evaluate the limit as well. Freaking Wolfram. I hate it when it does this. Stop! Okay, now you're gonna behave. Hey, we get two. All right, so our choice of A and B works. Proof by, by Wolfram Alpha. So save to, 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 to Brownie Man for, for the discussion. I feel like Wapitos with square roots um, it can sometimes make things worse. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to try it. Oh, uh, why do we as well? 
for noticing my uh, error there. My two cents worth, you're smart? I don't know about that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for the question, Mina. And just for uh, posterity, I'll take a screenshot of the whiteboard and put it in the thread that Mina made. Just give me a second to bring up my stream. <laughs> oh, okay. So you were just trying to compliment me. <laughs> Thank you for the two bits. I'll take them. You're, 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 you're two bits worth. Uh, with some hand waving and checking my answer via Wolfram, it looks like A equals 4 square root 2 and B equals 8. So a squared plus b squared equals 96. Okay. Hey, underscore. Um, no, Jed, you, 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 you can, though. I, I, was, I was taking a screenshot of uh, the whiteboard. I feel like it should have more saves, Bob. I don't know, we're... I feel like you've been around since before we were tracking saves, though. That might be the, the, the issue. Uh, hey there, Amon. Geometric progression? Uh, let's see what's up with it. That too, Bob, yeah. I also I, I forget to give out saves pretty often, so. Oh no. <laughs> the first three terms of the geometric progression are sine theta, two sine theta. Hey Gorioso Tom. Can we just submit any questions for fun or uh milk? It was A is four times square root two and B equals eight. I posted the screenshot in my Discord as well. Uh, Gloria, so welcome in. Um, you can ask a question for fun. The emphasis for my channel is um, more on homework help, so I reserve the right to just not do it. But since people around in chat who want to who want to discuss it or try it, or um, if the stream is slow, then I'll try it. Um, so I guess I, <laughs> if you want to put a question in chat, please do. But um. If it's just for fun, um, then I may or may not do it. Um, but welcome in, though. And Muhammad, I saw, but I, I said no, I don't want you DMing me for math help. I'm kind of concerned about that. Uh, yeah, Milk. Or, or root 2. First two terms of geometric progression are sine theta, 2 sine cube theta, and 4 sine to the fifth theta. Find the values of theta for which the progression is a sum to infinity. Ooh! Between 0 and pi over 2. It's on vector slash fluid dynamics. Oh, <laughs> I would love to know that. I know nothing about fluid dynamics, though. Um, uh, Muhammad, because you guilt me when I tell you no. That's why. <laughs> so you need to like calm the hell down, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would love to know more about it. Corey, also, Tom, I don't know anything about it, so I doubt I'd be able to do it. If someone else in chat wants to, like, volunteer and, like, ask about it, then, um, 
more, more power to, to you guys. If you're more into physics, um, I, I could say mostly just der derivatives. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you want to just pose the question anyway and see if I can understand it or someone else can, then, uh, feel free. So, uh, someone who I see discussing physics thing a lot is physics and depression. I haven't seen him stream in a, in like a week or two, but that's where I see them, like discussing like physics things uh, the most for, for, for fun. Cylindrical polar coordinates of flow in a cylinder is given by... Ooh. Uh, that could be interesting to look into. I I, I want to get to this question because Amon asked it and needs help with it. But uh, I, sh I should focus and get through this question. But I'll, I'll definitely like take a look in Google some things and see if I can wrap my head around what's happening in that, in that question after this. You think you solved it? So this is the, the marking scheme, apparently. I guess you have to bound each of these. Where is sine equal to 1? Those are r hats and theta hat vectors. Oh, okay, I see. You have the carriage just off to the side. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, Twitch doesn't have LaTeX, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so is the rule sine theta times 2 sine squared theta to the n? Uh, I, I honestly, I haven't even begun to think about this question. So I knew, I know each of them need to be less than one individually. Uh, actually, aren't they all less than one? Oh wait, but then um, we have the, the coefficients that make things use no trig rules. But I, I'm just gonna immediately look at the marking scheme. <laughs> Huh. This isn't very helpful. <laughs> I, I... It's a geometric series. Oh! Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay, so, Amon, are you still here? I think I understand the, the task now. Thanks to, uh, to, to Bob's explanation there. Sorry that I, you know, keep get, getting distracted with things. You are here? Okay, cool. So as Bob said, we need to make this fit into a geometric series. Because geometric series have very, like, convenient properties to use. And it, it also, it, it is just ge geometric in the first place. Um, I couldn't quite get there on my own. So, thankfully... Uh, we have chat to uh, do things for us. <laughs> okay. So. The terms of this are sine theta, 2 sine cubed theta, 4 sine to the fifth theta, and so on. So the thing to, to notice here is that our first term is sine theta. So I'll, say, I'll call that like a sub 0. And then R, as, uh, as we normally say, each time we're multiplying the sine theta by 2 sine squared theta. So you take sine theta, you multiply by 2 sine squared to get 2 sine cubed. You multiply that by 2 sine squared to get 4 sine to the fifth. And that's how the pattern continues. So we could write this as a geometric sequence with, uh, do they start from 0? Yeah. If we're to write it with summation notation, which might be more familiar to you, we would say that this is our geometric um, 
series. And we don't think we need this form, but the point is that we need R to be less than 1. Well, technically, we need to be the absolute value of R is less than 1. So we, we need this to be true, and we need to solve this equation for theta. Um, Got to work hard for your saves? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Um, whenever, if we solve this for, for theta, we can find all the values of theta for which this is true. So the first thing we can do with this inequality is notice that 2 is a positive number, and that since it's sine squared, it must also be positive, because squaring any number gives you a positive. So we can immediately just lop off half the, the interval here that's negative, and uh, get this instead. Um, okay, yeah, and then now what we do is we can divide each side, or we can divide everything through by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. That 2 cancels. It's less than 1 half. Now we can take the square root of everything, and square rooting does preserve inequalities, so we don't have any concerns there. So square root of 0 is 0. Square root of sine squared is sine. Square root of 1 half, we'll say is 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2 if you rationalize it. Can you explain why the minus 1 is omitted? Oh, sure. Hey, Mon. Um, basically, 2 is a positive number, and sine squared is a positive number, because anything squared is positive. So... Negative 1, 0, 1. It's like we're given this entire interval, but we only ever use this part of the interval because this is always a positive number or 0. So we just don't even need this. Like it, this part here is completely re redundant. It's like it is true, it's just not like the smallest interval possible. So we can also say that this is true. And it just supplies our calculations a bit. Because uh, when we come down here and we square root each side, we want to square root 0. We don't want to square root negative 1 because that makes things messy. <laughs> um, does that make sense? Do you remember your proof of the formula sum? Oh, yeah, I do. The question asks when the sum blows up. Oh, you're right, Linux physics. We can always reverse our answer at the end. Uh, I actually, I missed that completely though. So <laughs> thank you for, for, for saying that. Okay. So, um, okay. So you said, yeah, I got you. Okay. So I did accidentally reverse the question in my head. Um, the thing that I'm doing here is for when the sum does not blow up to infinity. So whatever answer we get from this, we had to take the reverse. <laughs> And I think it's how the marking scheme did it anyway, so this isn't such a bad thing. Um, I can show the other way to do it more directly, though, too. It should work out to be the same thing. Actually, yeah, it really will. I think this is even simpler to do it like this. Okay, so if we continue from this line, uh, let me write it as 0 is less than sine theta is less than root 2 over 2. Um... Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take the arc sign of all of this stuff, and um, we're allowed to do this with inequalities and not worry about any flipping or anything weird happening. Same thing with square root, because um, arc sign looks like that. It's strictly increasing. So, I mean, maybe this is getting a little bit too in the weeds of the mechanics here. But anytime you have a function that's strictly increasing, like arc sine looks like that, or square root that looks like that, um, that preserves inequalities. So uh, what we get if we arc sine everything, arc sine of 0 is 0. 
is less than theta. Arc sine of root 2 over 2 using the unit circle is pi over 4. Um, and so these are the values for which the series does converge. Let me make sure I'm not blocking. Okay, good. So our the entire interval of our asymptote is between 0 and pi over 2. So um, if this is where it converges, that means it'll diverge for pi over 4 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi over 2. So I just... Wherever it doesn't converge is where it'll diverge, basically. Yeah, br brownie. Uh, <laughs> yes. Arc sine is just um, sine inverse like that. It's completely the same thing. I just don't like this notation because the negative one exponent, it can get people mixed up with like one over sine of x. So these are completely different. But they look the same, so that's why I just use arc sine x to avoid it. <laughs> but if you're more used to inverse sine like that, it's valid too. I just don't like it. Um, yeah, but Brandon, that, that thing with in inequalities, like I, <laughs> it, it, took, it took me a while to like wrap my head around it. So, um, does that match the scheme? Wait. What? The scheme doesn't reverse it. This is where it converges, isn't it? As we showed. Oh, wait, never mind. This is interpret. No, no, no. They are asking where it converges. Not the sum for which the progression to infinity has a sum, is what they're asking. <laughs> okay, so I was doing it the right way the first time. That, 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 that's fair, that interpretation though. <laughs> yeah, so it, if you take the progress, so they only give you three terms of the progression. So if you take that progression infinitely, when does it have a sum? I think that's how... Okay. So yeah, Amon, you're right. I would take the first thing that I said then. Um, this, I did do, do, do it the right way around the first time, just for, for the wrong re reason, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, all the math I did here is right. It was just knowing what the question is. It is a, a very weird way of phrasing it. Okay, so... Uh, let's hand out some saves for, to everyone who is help, helping out. We got Brownie Man, we got Bob, we have Wadwe, uh, we have Linux Physics, and Milk. Okay. Papers are going to British GCSE, so blame the Brits for this weird wording, you know? <laughs> I'm going to write a strongly worded letter to, to the king after this. Feel like one of those ambiguous viral math problems? Yeah, kind of. Starting to make a meme about you for getting saves. <laughs> a sum comma to infinity versus a sum to infinity? Yeah. Uh, I guess the comma would have made it... Well, I don't know if it's grammatically correct. It, it definitely would have been more clear, though. Um, thank you for posting the marketing scheme too. It's it, <laughs> it's always helpful to know what they expect the answer to 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 be. Uh, 
Okay, you're doing a mathematics degree in the UK. Have you never seen stuff worded like that? I mean, no. I, bad wording happens here in America too, so maybe. <laughs> the British don't have a, 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 a monopoly on it. Okay, so um, I don't have a meme Discord channel. You're right. And I guess you just put it in general then. I don't know. Progression taking to infinity as a finite sum. Yeah, that would have made it more more clear. All right. Um, it's the meme. <laughs> all right, all right. Let, let's show this. I haven't seen this format. Are the memes inside of me? Is, is that the punchline? <laughs> Only in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, th uh, that's a fun qu question, though. Thanks for the question, Amon. Um, so, Gloria, so Tom, you were asking about fluid dynamics for fun. Let's uh, bring your question back. Uh, yeah, there is, Bob. Um, I think it should be in that spreadsheet. In cylindrical polar coordinates, the flow around a cylinder is given by u equals r hat. Is that u times r minus a squared over r, or u is a function? Guys, points to the region represented by flags. Yeah. <laughs> a stream function? Fluid dynamics stream function. How long are they streaming? Uh, probably at least another hour. I don't have a set time that I end the stream at. But I, I think I have a good while longer. Two-dimensional steady state flow of an incompressible fluid. The continuity equation simplifies. I'll just take this at its word. Uh, oh god. Is this a double partial, or does this mean... Because when I see v sub x, I would think the partial v in terms of x, but then you have this extra partial on the outside. <laughs> U is just a constant here. It's flow slash velocity. Huh. Okay. It's the x component of velocity. That makes more sense. Okay. Zach giving himself a save. Must be surprising the leaderboards. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See ya, a a a Amon. Thanks for, for for the question. Capital is a constant, little u is flow. Okay. Actually, let me um put it on screen there so I don't lose track of it. All right, enjoy the, the gaming, Bob. Um, so what, what exactly is going to be our stream?
stream function, I guess. So we have flow, which is little u, and we want to get to... Velocity? Which is the string function? Alright, I'm, try I'm trying to figure out, like, uh... I, I assume this is going to be some kind of, uh... relatively procedural thing if we can get the interpretation right. Oh god. What's the trident again? Is it Psy? I think it's Psy. This is the slope of the streamline. Yeah, I'm getting a little lost in this. Is this the same U that we have in the problem? Because that's something there. The stream function is C. If we know U is the result of a partial derivative of C in terms of Y, we could integrate in terms of... Well, this is polar. <laughs> okay. Oh god, this actually... This looks really cool. I'd love to study this more. This seems like it'd be like right up my alley. Start with a vector u with components that the basic vectors are e sub r and e sub theta. I never even thought about a vector and polar coordinates. That kind of hurts my head. See, I mean, I guess if someone wants to, like, hold my hand through the calculations here, I would follow through with it. Um, calculating the curl of a vector in polar? Oh, God. I, my, my calc 3 is pretty rusty. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to be able to figure out how to do this problem just from looking at, like, PDFs like I just had on screen. Um, so I don't know, I guess like what would you do with that vector or I, I don't like I, um, I wouldn't know how I would like to progress with this problem at, at, at all, I guess. And we don't have to, if, if we're like trying to like show it and, and talk about it, but if you want to actually like follow through with it, I would need a lot of like hand holding. <laughs> um... I do really appreciate anything you get like a very nice like visualization of things from the uh
equations like this. Uh, I'm going to go erase the board quick and then, I don't know, we might just go do abstract algebra setting or, you know, try you to use own. Oh, okay. F fair enough, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I, I, um, I guess you did just say you wanted to, to discuss it, but... Um... It's always not a problem I'd be able to, to, uh, to like, solve for you or anything like that. All right, whiteboard's all erased. Yeah, I, th I think we'll just go and take a look at uh, some algebra stuff. I've done some fluid stuff, just not string functions. Okay. Gravity potential phi force vector equals minus del phi. For string function, it is some velocity vector equals del c, cell psi. Hey, Zach, how's it going? I'm just looking at a fluid dynamics question for fun. It looks pretty cool, to be honest, but uh, I know n n nothing about it. So <laughs> this is a for fun thing, though, anyway. Going well. That's good to hear. It's so, like, what, what actually is you? Is it the direction? Is it like a vector field that's like... um? The direction of the flow at each point like that's how i'm in, that's how i'm guessing this works u is a vector of flow velocity okay well hey i okay i that <laughs> i'm glad at least got that far then in the question So the velocity vector that we're given is equal to del uh, psi, which is this bad boy here. I'm not saying the same representation though, because this is, it seems like rectangular coordinates. Oh, I mean, this seems like a much easier thing to like guide me through it, I guess. Glad we were you in your math education. I graduated uh, like maybe six years ago now with a bachelor's in applied math and a minor in computer science. Uh, grad school is, a gen is generally vaguely a goal of mine. Um... But for now, I just have a, a bachelor's. Oh, that's a nice stretch. So that, I bet I could follow through on the computations with this stuff. It's just the interpretation that would take me a long time to figure out. want to do in grad school um i don't know <laughs> so i i definitely want to stay on the applied side of math um i more just like the idea of going to grad school than having a specific thing that i'd want to do or 
something that I want to accomplish. Um, really what I would have to do is do a lot of research on grad schools to find something that sounds appealing, I guess, than having a specific goal. <sighs> you made that? Those are so good. What the hell? Look at these. You're you're super good at art. Wow. This isn't like you actually did these. It's not just like a filter in Photoshop or something. I mean, it's either way, it, it, it looks super awesome. I was amazed at like all like the detail. That's like even the text and the flag and stuff. It's real. Okay. Wow. Well, th th thank you for doing that. They, they look awesome. Um... Of course, what Tom says, I did a tiny bit of not theory as a research thing in my first year. Really? Help me do a bit more topology. Not theory? Is that literally like the theory of knots? Like you tie in a rope? Or does not mean something else? And I guess like I maybe see how that's related to topology, but I don't know about topology to know. It's sort of interesting. Wow. I <laughs> Yeah, friends who studied that. I I never knew that not theory was like a field of math, I guess. Mathematical knot is more like a closed loop embedded in R3. Okay. I went to a talk about it. Can learn some cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it, it seems so weird to try and like model a knot, but I, I guess I can see why people do it. Yeah, Muhammad, I, I like them a lot. Um, actually, this wouldn't be a knot because it's not closed. A circle is a knot. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's weird that there would be that constraint there. A trefoil knot. I feel like I've heard that. Oh, wait, I think it was someone's username or something. Trefoil. Because that, that. Or I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but. The simplest non trivial knot. I guess the circle is the uh, trivial knot. Huh. Is this just one circle? How does that work? Wow. I, I don't know how you would... Can you, can you start with this circle and tie the trefoil knot? The unknot, the circle? <laughs> 
No, you can't. Okay, that makes more sense then. You have to like create it like that. So I feel like already this like. I'm sure this is for a reason, but I feel, I feel like we've already lost, like, applicability to real-life situations if it's like this, but that's the point. They're, like, prime knots. Oh, okay. And you can make other knots out of these, or, like, combinations of them. They, they get kind of crazy over here. And I was saying it has to be applicable to, to real life, but when I hear knot theory, I'm thinking almost more like a physics problem. I'm sure there's cool things that you can do with this up too, even if it's not directly applicable. Uh, Muhammad, these are apparently it's a part of math called knot theory, and these are the various knots that are the prime knots, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Talk, you want to talk about Riedemeister moves? Go down a bit. them in your presentation. Oh, is it the same presentation? <laughs> That'd be funny if it was. Two knot diagrams belonging to the same knot can be related by a sequence of three kinds of moves on the diagram. Two knot diagrams belonging to the same knot. Dude, I, the word knot is here too many times. <laughs> okay, how about this? I'm going to call this like reducing a matrix, and these are the, your elementary row operations. In two matrices that can be decomposed to the same reduced row echelon form, can be it can be demonstrated that they reduce the same ro reduced row echelon form via these three elementary operations. So that's how I'm trying to relate this right now. <laughs> this is the key problem knot theory is how do you tell two knots apart? Okay. Like it might really be on top of each other and scroll it up, but it might just be the circle. Oh, I guess after you untangle the knot? So maybe my interpretation with linear algebra isn't that far off. Oh, and here's the not invariants that you speak of. They're not invariant. <laughs> it would be so confusing to give a talk on this verbally. <laughs> no one would know if you're saying not with a K or not like N-O-T. <laughs> They're not invariant. What about the Conway knot being solved recently? Things that don't change any of the read Mr. moves. Okay. They're not variant, they're not in there. <laughs> I I never knew this branch of math existed. In less than a week. That's the Conway knot. Could they have made it with a couple more pixels? Like, have they heard of anti-aliasing, man? <laughs> it probably just scaled up, to be honest. It looks fine at the original resolution.
Why aren't you more excited? <laughs> They're citing Wolfram Alpha. Wow. I mean, that's not a bad set, I guess. Uh, one of these days, a guy's named K. Knotts published a famous paper and all hell will break loose. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not theory. Enhance our understanding of the shape of DNA in the possible form of the universe? Okay. I, I guess there's, um, like, what do they call, like, non-homogeneous universes where the universe is potentially, like, lumpy and not, like, a sphere, like, is natural to imagine. I assume that's where not theory could be helpful. A higher dimensional knot? I don't I don't even want, want to know what that would be like. <laughs> Makes you think atoms were knots inside. That's the reason it started to make making knot tails originally. Really? Huh. That theory fell through. <laughs> Oh, wait. 82 years old last month? When was this published? In 2020. Oh, she was like in her 70s when she did this. She was 82 in 2020. Wait, she was 80 years old. Wow. Wait. At 80 years old, solve this pro- Wait, wasn't she a student? Or am I- Am I, am, I, am I mixing up my names? Oh, Conway! Never mind. I was like... In two years, she went from being a student and solving the problem on women a week to getting a 10-year track position at MIT. Okay, never mind. I got my names mixed up. Okay. Um, not, nothing new on Reddit, right? Oh, we'd have a DM. Person just says it makes sense. Okay. Uh, there's nothing to respond to there, so let's, uh... I still do some abstract algebra. Otherwise, Yanis would be very disappointed in me. Eh. Is this someone's question with a million knots? Someone's, yeah. They, they weren't asking me, though. <laughs> We're just looking at that for fun. Okay. Um, where was I? This abstract algebra stuff. I think we're looking through the examples still. Uh... 
I feel like we're on the special linear group. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. So I was reading through the special linear group. They are non-abelian group under matrix multiplication. The determinant one makes them the special linear group rather than the general linear group. I'm not bored, I'm just reading. Right, so the formula for the inverse, you don't need to worry about multiplying by anything because the determinants one anyway. The Lorentz group in special relativity has a double cover of SL2C. Oh, really? I can't say I know what the Lorentz group is or what a double cover is, but... <laughs> um, I guess it's good to know that this is a helpful thing for theoretical physics. The reason fermions have spin one half is because of this group, basically. Huh. Um, I know a tiny bit about spin. My the 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 theoretical th physics knowledge is next to nothing, though. <laughs> Choose from Z sub P. We use modulo P arithmetic to compute determinants, matrix products, and inverses. Okay, so this like modular matrix arithmetic is super weird to me. Um, to illustrate the case, SL2. So two by two matrices, um, multiplication over integers mod five. So the amount A equals 3, 4, 4, 4. The determinant of A is 12 minus 16 is negative 4. Mod 5 is 1? Yeah, I did it right. Okay. And the inverse of A is you just... Wait. What? Oh, never mind. I was, I was, never mind. Yeah. Okay. This is, uh, you get this when you switch around the diagonal here and you negate the other diagonal and then you have to do mod 5 of everything. So negative 4 is mod 5 become 1. Okay. In the sense the reason the periodic table exists is because of this group, really? Oh no, that's still interesting to know about um, special linear with complex numbers though. But by the way, I don't know if you've seen this, or I don't know if I've seen you in chat during this, like before. But this is um, I'm happy to talk about uh, that stuff too. But um, what, what, the book that I'm reading through right now is um an abstract algebra book that's part of Penn Center's like reading group, and I've been kind of trying to keep up. I'm probably going to be like uh behind because I'm learning this more or less for the first time. Any problems on rings, homomorphisms, integral domains on quotient, quotient vector spaces, etc.? Uh, not for a long time, Gloriosa Tom. 
this is like a we're, we're very early on um so this is basically just introducing groups what i'm on right now i've said a tiny bit of algebra before but i really didn't understand anything um and since you are a new face around here at least if you don't know about other math streamers uh if you are interested you don't have to do anything at all if you don't want to but if you're interested in looking at more math streams there's a whole list of them there and out of that list pen center is the one who's putting on this reading group that i'm trying to like keep up with but like over in pen center discord there's like a discussion channel in, in his discord and uh stuff like that you do physics so your abstract algebra is a bit different to yours most of what you need right now is lee groups and lee algebras so that's interesting to know that um Algebra is helpful at all in physics. <laughs> I, I I didn't think it, it would be. I think if you're doing theoretical physics, you do a lot more. The standard model is basically just applying a Lie group to quantum mechanics? Huh. The more you know. To be honest, I thought this stuff was just... I think I don't want to call it useless, but kind of useless. <laughs> like, fun, and, you know, it, it does make up the fundamentals of math, but I didn't know it actually had such a direct application to physics like that. So, use is probably too strong of a word, but... I, I'm glad to know it does have an like a very direct use like that. Do you know that complex number z equals x plus i y can be represented as a matrix? Where the determinant is a magnitude? From here you can expand to other groups. I did not know that. Is the determinant the square of the magnitude? I can see that. But x squared plus y squared... You Don't you have to square root it? Okay, yeah. A lot of which are just symmetry, so they're very physics applicable. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so what's happening? I, I feel okay enough with the special linear group up there. I've already talked a little bit about the general linear group in the previous examples, but let's see what it's saying now. I think I'm talking about general linear under matrix addition, and this is now about multiplication. Okay, so that's kind of as I expected. The reader should... Uh, if I'm the reader, should I check this? <laughs> it's probably good practice to do this. Mod 7 is practice. Alright. Because I, I, I'm not too good with modular arithmetic, so it might actually be helpful for me to actually check that this inverse is right. So we're working mod seven. Four, five, six, Uh, one, three, five, six. All right, so we're doing matrix multiplication mod seven here. So we take that column times that row, 
Uh, 4 plus 25 is 29. 29 mod 7 is indeed 1, because 7 goes into 28. This column times that row. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 5 times 6 is 30. 12 plus 30 is 42. 42 is 0 mod 7. That column times that row. 6 plus 15 is 21, which is 0 mod 7. Wow, funny how that works. That times that. Uh, 18 plus 18 is 36. 7 goes into 35. So, okay. That was pretty simple. Just confirming that they did indeed get the right inverse there. Uh, the set 1, 2, up to n minus 1 is a group under multiplication mod n if and only if n is prime. Good to know. This will be helpful in the exercises. Let's just kind of get summarizing chart. of all the groups they've talked about so far. All right, properties of groups. In a group G, there is only one identity element, so it's unique. Suppose E and E prime are both identities of G, then A E equals A for all A and G, and E prime A equals A for all A and G. It would be true if you put the E on the other side of A and the E prime on the other side of A as well, but I assume they have this arrangement for a particular reason. Choices of A equals E prime in part one Okay, since A is any element, then you can choose an A. It just happens to be E prime. Um, yield E prime E equals E prime. Right, so E prime E equals E prime. And in part B, A equals E, so E prime E equals E. Thus... Oh, yeah, so you get E prime E equals E prime, and you get E prime E equals E. So these are the same, like, left-hand sides. So transitively, E prime equals E. Okay. So Linux physics, I think if it's a group, that is true. It doesn't have to be a group, but... At least for the definition they give in the book here... It, it kind of weirds me out, but apparently it's the same inverse that you can left or right multiply to get back. Or not inverse, I'm sorry, the same identity that you can left or right multiply to get the same matrix back. So if it's not true, you wouldn't consider that a group. Well, I mean, it's specifically true for the identity. Or like, you know, the, the, the identity is abelian, I guess. The rest doesn't have to be. And yeah, I mean, it makes me more uncomfortable with, with inverses. Like, when I first saw this, I tried it with um, two by two matrices whose determinants were not zero, and it does work. Prove the left inverse is the right inverse. Yeah, Bobby, I think I've seen that, and I think my, they may even give it in the book. I remember someone typed it in my chat once. Um, just as a little experiment, because I tried it with inverse matrices, I didn't try it with, um, 
the identity though. If we have one, it's like right multiplying by one zero one is something I that you know I, I can just buy that that's gonna be fine. But if we have a matrix like that, determinant is not zero. Does that come out to be the same matrix when you left to multiply it? Okay. And then maybe we can even tell me what the inverse is, little frame. Ugh, it's gonna give it to me like that. Minus 2 over 22. So it's not necessarily true for all matrices, but if it's a group, it does have to be true. So this inverse, which gives the identity. And then if we take the same matrix and put it on the left, we should get the identity back out. There, yeah. So it's, it's kinda, it kind of makes me uncomfortable, but I guess it works. So, <laughs> cause I'll, you know, when, when I first, when I took my, my, my linear algebra class, they pounded into your head that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Do not try to commute it. But then it turns out, at least in certain contexts, you can commute it. It's just not generally true. That's my understanding, at least. I would love to be corrected if I'm wrong. German word for identity is Einheit. So that's why they use E. Okay. Uh, cancellation. In a group G, the right and left cancellation law holds. That is, BA equals CA implies B equals C, and AB equals AC implies B equals C. Okay. So they start by proving the right cancellation. Let A prime be the an inverse of A. Multiplying the right. Oh, okay, that's simple enough. Consequential, and this relies on associativity, I guess, for it to work. So, but we do require associativity, so that's fine. Consequence of the cancellation property is the fact that in a K table for group, each group element occurs exactly once in a row and column. I guess exercise 31 is going to be good for me to do, because I don't see how that is true. <laughs> Another consequence of the cancellation property is the uniqueness of inverses. Okay, yeah, so here's proving the commutativity of at least the inverse. Suppose uh, for each element in a group, there's a unique element B in G such that AB equals BA equals E. I guess you already take this part as true, though. Never mind. It's just proving uniqueness. Uh, suppose B and C are both inverses of A. Then AB equals E and AC equals E. So AB equals AC. And the both sides give B equals C. Okay. Fair enough for the uniqueness. As was the case of the identity element, it is reasonable in view of theorem 2.3 to speak of the inverse of an element G of a group. By G inverse, right? They just suggested by that use for ordinary real numbers and multiplication. When N is positive integer, the associated law allows us to use GN for G to the N to denote the unambiguous product that, okay? We define G0 to be E. When N is negative, it's G inverse to the power of the absolute. Okay. No non-integer exponents, fair enough. So you can add exponents, you can multiply exponents, but you cannot distribute exponents because it's not abelian, necessarily.
Playing with the existence of, un of a unique inverse for each group element A is that for every element B in the group, there's a unique solution in the group of the equations AX equals B and XA equals B. Normally, X equals A inverse B in the first case, and X equals B A inverse. Okay. In contrast, the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the equation 2x equals 4 has solutions x equals 2 and x equals 5 under multiplication mod 6. Um, right, because 10 mod 6 is 4, and 4 mod 6 is 4. Okay. Yeah, ab squared is ab, ab, and unless it's abelian, you can't rearrange those. This set is another group under multiplication mod 6. Oh yeah, because um, you have things that are factors of 6 in here. Or rather, not re relatively prime to 6. I'm going to be careful with this notation when dealing with a specific group as many operations addition and denoted by plus. I mean, it can be confusing to translate the notification or the no, the notation to addition. Wait, what is NG then? If N is not a member of the group, then what is NG? Oh, I guess mul I guess it can still be a multiple. Okay. In the socks and shoes property, uh, a b in parentheses inverse is equal to b inverse a inverse. So you have this like switching of the order. Hey, Fembox. How's it going? Can I see more abstract algebra? Yeah. Um. I guess we're nearly like the end of like the reading part of this. Oh, I'll see where Pen is at now because I wasn't able to catch the stream today, but I assume it's going to go on to chapter three anyway. I saw him working on a lot of chapter two stuff, so. Um, since AB times AB inverse equals E, and AB times B inverse A inverse. But can you say, oh, never mind. Equals E. Oh, because of um left cancellation of the AB. Okay. So you get AB times AB inverse equals AB times B inverse A, A inverse. And then you left cancel the ABs. Okay. I was talking about the non-commutativity of matrix multiplication. Uh, 
Ah, oh, I feel you, Heisenberg. See the pension machine take us here at work. Ah, oh, that sucks. Nothing but the Matrix Hackers well known to me since my student days from Roseanne's lectures in Breslau. <laughs> I do like this historical note here. Add some spice to it. Born eventually got a Nobel Prize. Uh, what are some examples of lead groups and using them to solve problems, etc.? I've seen a lot of groups like K4, DNS, and SLGL. I've not really heard of them much. I, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. I am I know it's directed towards Bladby. Okay, so I guess let's just... Should we just go down the list? Yeah, let's go down the list. Which of the following binary operations are closed? Subtraction of positive integers is certainly not closed because you can do 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Uh, division of non-zero integers. That's not true because you can end up in a, with a rational number if you do 1 divided by 2. Um, function composition of polynomials with real coefficients. I would think so. Um, unless you consider, can you compose two polynomials to get zero or something? And a zero polynomial? Yeah, right. They, they, they've used subtraction not being associative as like <laughs> an example. It's kind of a uh, weird. I'm on page seventy-seven. How do they like? Do they define a polynomial in the book? Polynomial. Oh, that's page one twenty-eight. Let's come on. Okay, they don't seem to give a definition of polynomial. Um, I mean, x is a polynomial, so I don't think it can't... can't. Is a constant a polynomial? I feel like it, there maybe is some way that you could compose po polynomials to get rid of all the variables. It is? Alright, then maybe in that case we're still okay then. Like, we're certainly not going to get a sign randomly thrown in there. So now you can think about, like, an x to the zero term. I don't know if that's, like, the actual definition, though. Okay, this is saying constants are polynomials. Actually, maybe it's not. Another way around the sock shoe property, there's duality between seeing elements of a group as simple elements, or as transformations to apply to something. For example, a matrix group, let's say GL2, contains matrices, which can, then, which can be applied to vectors via multiplication. If you apply A, then B, you need to undo B first, then A. Okay, yeah. Just like you would to undo the multiplication. It depends what we call group actions in France. Group 
That that makes sense, yeah, that you have to um if you want to untransform something. Wait. What's up with this? They're both six. What's the difference? Either way, I guess it's calling a constant a polynomial, but th 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 these first two rows make no sense to me whatsoever. Is it the P of X that's the difference? I. I mean, I, I, I think I have the answer to that. I think it is close. Like, I don't see how you possibly compose polynomials to get something that's not a polynomial, then, if constants are considered polynomial. Um, I don't know if that's a proof, but I feel like a proof it would be kind of complicated. It's a generalized proof. Should have said zero. Oh, okay, that will make sense then, Fenbox, I think. Multiple choice to give degree of zero depending on the usage. Okay. Yeah, I think I remember hearing someone talking about how um zero is an undefined degree, whereas any constant except for zero is degree zero. Um, I forget why. Multiplication of two by two matrices with integer entries. Um, yeah, that's a group. Or I mean, that's closed, rather. Because you're not talking about inverses, so you're not going to get any rational numbers. Okay. Exponentiation of integers. Now that seems kind of vague to me for part E. Are the exponents allowed to be any real number? In which case, certainly not closed. Or are, 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 I mean, are you talking about integers to the power of any number? Or any number to the power of an integer? I don't know what that means, to be honest now, the, the more I think about it. <laughs> we have a degree negative infinity to extend the relation degree of p times q equals degree of p plus degree of q. Problem 48, there's a mistake. Let's see what that one is. Oh, there's Blabby. Make sure I don't like try this one later. In a finite group, show that the, or at least if I do try it, try it the right way. The number of non-identity elements that the equation x to the fifth equals e is a multiple of five. What? The number of non-identity elements that satisfy the equation x to the fifth is equal to e is a multiple of five. What's the mistake, I guess? Because I, I, I remember you're having even uh, uh, wrap my head around how you do that. Hey, Mama. Um, let me see what Bradley says. Poincare group 
it's like the group of space-time, it's Lorentz transformations, rotations and boosts plus translations. Spectromagnetism is a gauge theory where the group is U of 1, the strong force is created by SU2. Okay, yeah, I... <laughs> Those are definitely words. Oh, cool. I'm glad you guys are able to understand each other. Um, what's the mistake here, though, Funbox? I guess you need to find... Could we find the mistake to consider Z mod 5 under addition? So, it, well, Z mod 5, so that means you're talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so, multiple of 5. Oh, is it going to be like there's only one thing? That to the 5th e equals E and 1 isn't multiple of 5? Uh, what's the 5th power? is going to give you under uh, multiplication the identity is one if you do four times four you get 16 mod five is one so it's not four is it going to be two then two uh to the fifth is 32 which is two mod five so it's not four it's not two uh three to the fifth oh god it's a number Well, you do... Th mm, no, it doesn't help you. You can do... Um, 9 mod 5 is 4. Times 4 is 16. Mod 5 is 1. Times 3 gives you 3 again. Addition! Oh my god, I was saying multiplication. I don't know why. Um, I, I read the exact same mistake the book w w warned of. Of... <laughs> Remembering that <laughs> even though it looks like multiplication, it's still actually addition when your operation is addition. Um, God damn it. Okay. You can still, I mean, you can still, like, you know, consider it as multiplying by five if you want to cheat with doing addition. But yeah, it's something not, you know, four to the power of five. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> Uh, the identity here is 0, because we're talking about addition mod 5. So, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is, is... 4 times 5 is 20, is 0 mod 5. So, 4 is one that works. 3... Oh, do they all work? That's the thing here, because they all... It's basically doing 5 times whatever your number is, and 5 times anything mod 5 is 0, which is your identity. Okay. <laughs> uh, so wait. But there's five elements there though, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, zero, one, two, three, four. Five, five is a multiple of four. So what's the, what's the problem? Isn't this exactly true for addition mod 5? Oh, non-identity. So you can't include 0. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or, yeah. So, okay. That's fair. Oh, oh I didn't see that message before that, Muhammad. Uh, well, I'll see you around. Thanks for coming by the stream. All right, see, see them, Muhammad. But if you do remove the word non-identity, does that break it for other things? Uh,
multiple of four. So if we do addition mod six, um, what happens there? Zero is identity, so we don't consider it zero. We do, so one, uh, that's basically five mod six is five. That doesn't work. Two becomes 10 mod six is four. That doesn't work. Three becomes 15 mod six, which is three, which doesn't work. Really? Four becomes 20 mod six is four. It doesn't work for anything mod six with addition, right? Uh, five becomes 25 mod six. Yeah. It's an even number problem, which makes it even sketchier. But yeah, addition mod six, I don't think there's anything besides the identity. This might just not be true. Yeah, I definitely agree that it doesn't seem right in some way. I don't know if you can modify it to be true, but I mean, like we saw with that uh, problem with rationals, like they have g given problems that are straight up impossible. So, <laughs> all right, see what, why do we, <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out for discussing physics. And all that good stuff. Um, oh yeah, so I'm, I'm still confused about exponentiation of integers. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Is that integers to a power of any number? Is it integers to the power of an integer? Is it any number to the power of an integer? I guess we can think about all three of the cases, but I don't know. Eh. The following are associative subtraction of integers. Nope. Division of non zero rationals. Uh, no. I think I saw Penn do this one. Yep. Yeah, the, the physicists are out strong here today. Uh, apparently, abstract algebra is directly applicable to physics, and I had no idea. They mean integers under the operation exponentiation. So integers to the power of an integer? Uh, hey, SG1. I guess that will be closed. Well... No, because you have negative exponents. So, all right. what do they say the answer is? Because that's an odd number problem, right? So, Trying to persuade me into the dark side. <laughs> I like this more that, than I like this, let me tell you. I'm just kind of terrible at physics. I, I, it's been way too long since I took it, I've taken a physics class. C and D are the closed ones, I assume they mean with that. So they're saying E is not closed. Uh, so I assume they mean integers to the power of an integer, which is not closed because you can have 2 to the negative 1 is irrational. This is, is lovely stuff, yeah. Bring you back to light with not theory and topology. 
Oh my god, I definitely don't like that. But it's apologies another one where I probably would need to know a bit of it. Um she had division runs your rationals. No, because it changes your flipping. You have to you're, 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 yeah. I, I that's the most explanation I'm gonna give. Because I'm too lazy to go, go up to the whiteboard right now. <laughs> function composition of polynomials with real coefficients. Function composition in general is associative. Wait. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Function composition is, is associative. Actually, it's oh I I need to actually do BL. I don't know that my rationale is right there. Association for division of non-zero rationals. A, D, B, C, E over F. I don't even like that necessary. A, D, B, C times F over E. So you get A, D, F, B, C, E. Now let's do the other scenario. I think it's not going to be associative. Still. Because this... Division size is going to get distributed. CF DE. DE over CF. Yeah, we get different things here. ADE, BCF. Yeah, so the um, E and the F switched. So that's not closed. Or not, um, it's not associated. Tomorrow's gonna suck? Why is that? Okay. Um, multiplication of 2 by 2 matrices with integer entries. I would think so. Matrix multiplication is associative. Go look at your code again. Oh, that's not good. Exponentiation of integers associative. What does it mean to be associative with exponentiation of integers? Those headlines took you an hour to validate. Yep. So then let's say if you have like two squared cubed to the fourth, I think it will be associative because the exponents just multiply. And multiplication is associative. You need to do the same thing for the should be inverse of those templates. Oh, okay. Good luck with that, I guess. Which of the following binary operations are commutative? Subtraction of integers. No, because you commute them, you, you reverse the sign. Division of non zero real numbers. Division is not commutative. Uh, function composition of polynomials with real coefficients. Uh, function composition is definitely not commutative, right? Yeah, it's not. Wait, of polynomials though? Oh! 
Um, no, that's not commutative. I remember, okay, I remember be, uh, being here for a uh, pen stream on this one. Apparently there are certain polynomials that do commute under composition, but they're like special cases. It's not generally true. Basically the same thing with some changes. Well, hopefully if you know your current code is right, it'll make it easier to do the inverse, but good luck, I guess. Uh, matrix multiplication, that's not commutative. Exponentiation of integers. Well, if I use the same rationale as above here, if you have 2 cubed squared, that would be the same thing. That's right. Yeah, that there, there's some way they can find, they certainly find commutative polynomials for composition. But it's definitely not generally the case. Oh okay, yeah, the, uh, they're saying uh, polynomials though. Uh, but I thought the first thing that you did too, I was like, oh, like, oh, give sine x and ln x or, or something. But you can have like um x squared plus one and x squared even, and I don't think those would commute. X plus one x squared, yeah, that's a much simpler example. Yeah. <laughs> The, the only trick is to not use x itself, because x is the identity, and that does co commute. Or by some, or don't by some miracle accidentally name one of the few examples that, that does commute, aside from x. <laughs> So 2x squared minus 1 and 4x cubed minus 3x. Apparently those commute. Uh, can Wolfram Alpha do it for us? Because I, I definitely don't. You checked and they work? Oh, okay. I wonder if, I'm, I'm definitely not, not, not going to do it like myself. But if Wolfram Alpha will tell me what f of g of x is, I'd be pretty chill. Let's see. Nope. There might be a way they can make Wolfram Alpha do it, but I don't know. But would it just get... If I give it just the two functions on its own, would it know to get their uh, compositions? Nah. Compose? Nope. Okay. Who cares? So, okay, actually, you know, when I was looking at the answer key for number one, I did see the answers for number three, which said none. But exponentiation of integers, with the way that I was interpreting it, that does seem commutative. Oh, yeah, I could copy-paste stuff, I guess, but I'm too lazy for, for that. So like if you have two to the negative one cubed, you can definitely do two cubed then to the negative one. Does zero cause issues? Is that's why? No. Oh, you 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 did it, Jed. Oh wait, is that what that means? Fenbox. I thought you always had the same integer, and you just had multiple powers. Oh, what did I? That's not how that works. Oh, there we go. Well, never mind. It doesn't. There we go. Okay. And then let's uh, get another Wolfram tab.
So I was interpreting that whole exponentiation thing as like three to the like to the two to the three, or like three or whatever like that. Given. Thanks a lot, Wolfram. Got to move the X. What X? That one? Oh, really? That's so weird. Okay. 33x to the 6. Or 32x to the 6 minus 48x to the 4th. Phoenix squared minus 1. Well, that commutes. We got a commuter. I don't know why Wolfram needs it like that, but fair enough, I guess. Good job on figuring that out. Or I guess, like, I was interpreting the um, exponentiation thing as you always had the same base. And the only thing you're changing ever is the exponents. But I guess that's not really true. You'd have to ask them, I guess. Subu is just streaming today, too. Oh, but you, you were probably at work. Mm. Oh, a factor is them. Okay. Well, there you go, too. All right, n number four. Which of the following sets are closed under the given operation? 0, 4, 8, 12, addition mod 16. You have to be students he missed. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, is that the format underscore? Hmm. So I assume uh, 0, 4, 8, and 12, it will be closed because these are all multiples of 4, and 16 is multiple of 4. We're not missing any multiples of 4. So like 12 plus 12 is 24, mod 16 is 8, so we're good. 8 plus 12 is 20, which comes out to 4. 4 plus 8 is 12, which is 12. Yeah, all right, so I think the first one is closed. The next one, same numbers, but we're mod 15. We're probably, we're, we're, this is de definitely not closed. Um, 8 plus 12 is 20, mod 15 is 5. 5 is not in this list, okay. X is identity, and F commutes with itself and identity. So as long as it's some combination of itself and the identity, it should commute? Is what you're saying? Um, now in part C, we have 14713 mod 15. Mm. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 mod... Oh, multiplication. Multiplication. I missed that. Um. Okay, so first off, 1 times all of the rest definitely works. Um, 4 times 7. Well, actually, 4 times itself first, right? 
Uh, four times four is sixteen. That's a one. Okay. Four times seven is twenty-eight, which is thirteen. Right. Okay. Four times thirteen is uh fifty-two, which is seven. Wow. Okay. Now seven times seven is forty-nine, which is four. Seven times thirteen. 52 times 8 is 104, minus 13 is 91, which is 1 mod 15. Wow. And finally, 13 squared is 169. Uh, 169 is 4 mod 15. Wow. So this is close somehow. For multiplication mod 15, what do you need to be closed? They are all relatively primed to 15, but it, there's other numbers that are also relatively primed to 15. Um, it's like 2 and 8, but they're both multi like not relatively primed to 4. 11. Like, why isn't 11 in this group? That's a prime number below 15. Uh, we're modding 15, Tom. It might be hard to read on stream. Sorry if I'm not zoomed in enough. No, you're good. It's hard for me to know, like, how zoomed in I should be on this, so... That, now I know, at least. Uh, in linear algebra, when we want to prove that maps commute one way is to show that one is a polynomial of the other really okay so i don't know if there's an easy way to check like for part c or d aside from trying every combination but for only for elements it doesn't take that long so one times all of the rest definitely work four times four is 16 mod nine is 7, which is good. 4 times 5 is 20. Mod 9 is a 2. No, that's not close. Because 4 times 5. Okay. What's U14 here? Is it somewhere on the screen? Oh, there? Um, It's, uh... Ah... <sighs> All the numbers from, I think, 1 to 14, or 1 to 13 that are relatively prime. Oh, it's, it's called the, the unitary group. Okay, here's where they define it. Uh, yeah, this is multiplication mod n. So the elements of the group are every number, every integer less than, every positive integer less than that number and relatively primed to that number. So like u10 is 1379 and you do multiplication mod 10. And then I guess um, if it's 14, it'll be like the same construction. Uh, so we got through number four, right? Yeah. Find the inverse of the element under the given operation in number five. 13 in integers mod 20. What's the operation? Does Z20 imply addition? Um...
I feel like they use this to talk about addition or multiplication. <laughs> so I'm kind of confused by this question. Z implies addition? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. So the inverse of 13, uh, when we're talking about inter integers mod 20, is 7, right? Because your identity is 0? It was in the big list? Okay. Thank you for uh, saying that. And then the inverse of 13, u14, I guess, is now multiplication mod 14, and only relatively prime to 14 is allowed, or that is not a group. So your identity is 1, so you need to name a multiple of 13 that is 1 more than a multiple of 14. Um, 26, no. 39, no. 52, no. 65. No way, right? No. Uh, 78? No. 92? Wait. That's not right. 91. No. What the heck? Wait, no. It can only be, um... 13 times 1, two, or... <laughs> you love math? Heck yeah, Herbox. Uh, we're going to have some things we have to try here. We have to try things that are relatively prime to 14. So 13 times 2 is 26. Oh no, uh, 2 isn't relatively prime to 14. 13 times 3 is 39. Which doesn't give you 1 mod 14. Um, 13 times 5 is 65, and 14 doesn't go into 64. Uh, 13 times 7, oh god, 91, I said. 14 doesn't go into 90, right? 14 times 5 is 70? Which means it doesn't go into 90. 13 times 9 is one is 117. Does 114 or does 14 go into 116? Oh please get give, give me the idea to avoid checking by hand. <laughs> If 14 goes into 70, then 14 uh, goes into 140, duh. So 14 goes into um, 126, goes into 112. What did I say 13 times a 9 plus? 127? Or 117? Oh my god. One seventeen, and I said that fourteen goes into one twelve. So it's gonna be thirteen times eleven. One forty three. No, that's not right. What? Consider negative numbers as a way to keep the product smaller and more manageable. Um, oh, that's right. You, you can subtract. Ooh, uh, Brad Ice Bandit 11. Thanks for the. Or Brad Ice Bandit. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, the linear combination way crossed my mind. I don't really know when you have two unknowns there. Like how you get integer solutions.
Yeah, you can either type it out right there in chat, or if it's easier, you can put it in my Discord if you need to do like a screenshot or something. Or if you just prefer Discord. Welcome in. Um. And then you can post the question down in like math homework help in that form or in math discussion, whatever is easier for you. M solution is a second more direct approach that does work sometimes pretty quickly, like here. Um, and so Gorgeous will tell I think he's giving the hint here in a different case. So if you want to do 13 times 9, let's say. 9 mod 14 is the same thing as what? Negative 5 mod 14? So we can do 13 times negative 5. Which is negative 65 mod 14. Which comes out to 5. Okay. Oh, 13 is negative 1? Okay, yeah, that's much simpler. <laughs> uh, okay. So, if we, wanted to, if we want to check 11, it'd be negative 1 times negative 3. Did, did, did I skip right past whatever it was supposed to be? It's part of the th th 3 mod 14. I, I I did my math wrong at some point then. Uh, 13 is negative 1, so how about 7? No, it's not 7. Do I... what? Posted wherever? Okay. I, I, I Apparently I can't do basic arithmetic here. So let's, uh, I'm sure this, this problem will be easier. <laughs> um, a boat sails three kilometers south and 10 kilometers southeast. Oh yeah, we can definitely do this. I didn't miss it yet. It's 13, it's own inverse. It's 169. 14 goes into 168. It does. It's its own inverse. Negative 1 times negative 1. Oh my god. Okay. I get it now. So I guess there, uh, you can probably make that as a normal like rule too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and underscore is saying the kind of generalized version of that. All right. Well, thank you guys for the help of that, for letting me ace. <laughs> Even though that is painful, it does help me like understand this more. Um, to kind of like go, go through that pain. Oh, you know what, Brad Ice or Brad? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong. You're my 666th follower, so you, I feel like you get a special like prize. I am not going to give you a prize, but I feel like you deserve one. Uh, so, okay, so your problem is a boat sails three kilometers south, then ten kilometers southeast. Um, <laughs> pray. <laughs> uh, use trig to find the boat's displacement and bearing from its starting point. Okay, the bearing part... Uh, okay, we're going to use trig here. I... Our new dark master. <laughs> okay, so the bearing stuff, something gets a little bit tricky for me. So if something looks off, it probably is off. Um, so we're traveling 10 kilometers, wait, three kilometers south. Then 10 kilometers southeast. That's west. Off to a great start, aren't I? I promise you, I, I, no, 
I, I, I know math. Just not that well, apparently. 45 degree angle there. Okay. <laughs> Bearing is like, um, value of the degree from the y-axis to the displacement. So, flat earth coming in clutch? It kind of is, yeah. <laughs> Um, the bearing, if you uh, the bearing is like if you have um, north, east, west, south. Your bearing is like I think it's like north, like you know seventy five degrees east or something. I know. Would you call this? I guess, or would it be equivalent like south fifteen degrees east, depending on which direction you go from? But the bearing is it's like that. I think there's different conventions for it though. Um, north is zero degrees. East is 90. Oh, so do you just go all the way around or? So wait, it, it uh, that's a good question. So it um, with your bearing here, if you start facing north, oh, I did do my math terribly wrong. That's not seventy five degrees. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if east is ninety degrees, if you're just past east, you know, let's call that one hundred five degrees. Is that like how you would write a, a, a bearing in your class, just one hundred five de degrees? Please use metric. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> um. So we can make a triangle out of this. Uh. So we have to use trig here. Um. Okay. What I would say. I'm thinking that we want to break things down to x components and y components. So we want to figure out our total displacement south and our total displacement east. Um, and I'm sorry, because I'm not like the most experienced with these like bearing problems. I know the math behind them, but actually putting in terms of bearings isn't my uh, like forte. So. Use cosine law. Oh, you know, cosine law is probably easier. Um, boat sails thirteen kilometers south and ten kilometers. So I, that'll give you the that'll give you the displacement. Um. It won't get you the bearing, but we could work out the bearing later. So, yeah, and you just boil down to triangle like this. You can certainly do law of cosines here. Um, you say the remaining side, I'll call it D for displacement. Uh, you'd say that D squared is equal to 3 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 3 times 10 times cosine of 45 degrees. D squared is 9 plus 100 is 109 minus uh, 60. Cosine of 45 degrees. I know my unit circle, so that's root 2 over 2. Uh, if you use your calculator, it'll be a decimal. I Like 0. 0.7, I guess, or something like that. This is definitely a calculator problem. <laughs> I would just take the square root of this entire thing and put it into the calculator. Let's see what this comes out to be. The angle, I'm I'm sure we can do. I just gotta work it out. 135 degrees? Really? What? 
You turn 40, you turn, you're already facing, if you're facing south, and you start heading southeast, you've turned 45 degrees, haven't you? 135 degrees is like all the way around here, isn't it? Like we're already facing south. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so yeah, I think that this displacement from the origin, we've traveled three kilometers south, and then I'm interpreting as if you then go ten kilometers southeast, that's a forty-five degree turn. Because straight east would be a 90 degree turn. This triangle is also not to scale. <laughs> so it'd be 135 if you measured it. Only the final answer has to be a bearing. For the sake of this triangle, it doesn't have to be a bearing. Like for the final answer, we do have to get our bearing, which will be measured from the north. But we don't actually need the bearing for the sake of the triangle, I think is the confusion. Hey, Rombe. Yeah, you can definitely do this with vectors as well. Um, but we're supposed to use trick. I think my triangle's right. <laughs> it's outside my... Oh... Dang it. I get what, why you're thinking 135 now. <sighs> Alright, you guys are right. <laughs> Alright. That angle is 45 degrees. And of course, supplementary angles make it 135. And Bob, you're right. It doesn't look like a 45 degree angle. But I, I also know that my drawing skills are complete garbage, so... I don't put that much faith into <laughs> drawing things correctly. Um, okay, so, Bandit, if you haven't completely ignored me because of my... Pitiful bearing skills here. Let's see what we should get for the uh, <laughs> displacement. <laughs> you also use 45 for the angle? Okay, I'm glad we made the same mistake then. I, 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 at least I, I, I'm not alone. Uh, so actually, uh, do you understand what, why we're saying that it should be 135 then? But the, uh, <laughs> you're only getting one save, Bob. What I wrote is true too. It's minus a, a times a negative. It's gonna be fine. That's true, Fit Fenbox, yeah. Okay, you're lost? That's completely fair, Bandit. Let, let me back up and explain. Okay, so <laughs> um let's get rid of all this. Let's just redraw our journey here. Where's my marker? I was, I'm evidently lost too. <laughs> East, south. Okay, so we start, we're going south. Three kilometers. I think you're on board with that part. And then we turn 45 degrees, which is where we both got confused. So we turn 45 degrees out here. But the issue is we're drawing the triangle from here. So we need actually, it's called a supplementary angle. If you remember that from like a geometry class, where the straight line adds to 180 d degrees, but you need the flip side of this. So you do 180 minus 45 is 135.
is the angle right inside there. That's why we're saying it should be 135 because we're talking about the inside of the triangle here. If you're going sailing, you're not taking me with you. Why not, Bob? I'm sure we'll... Okay, just set course for somewhere you don't want to go and we'll probably end up where you do want to go. Okay, now it makes sense, yeah. So I made the same exact mistakes. I wouldn't feel bad about it. Um, and then I, it sounds like you understand how, how to apply the law of cosines. Bill says you only two and a half years. <laughs> That's fair. Is that something wrong with my law of cosines? Or is that rearranging the same thing? Why is the sign on the cosine flipped? Okay. As long as, as, long as you agree with me, I'm not going to question it. <laughs> so square root 109 uh, minus 60 cosine um, 135. Let's not put faith in my unit circle skills either. It gets flipped on its own, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, twelve point three. That's the that, that's our displacement. <laughs> God, why are these problems so hard? <laughs> okay. So yeah, if you do the law of cosines... <laughs> what did I say the, 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 the number is? I, I already forgot. 12.3. Okay, God. Um... So now we need to work out the bearing, which is this angle. And that angle, I thought, is what you guys were talking about at first. Got the same? Okay, good. Glad we agree. <laughs> Everything's the right triangle. It definitely won't lead to confusion. Um, so we need to figure out what this angle is up here, or this angle up here. And I guess we want law of sines here. Um, and so just to show, if you... I'll show what law of sines is generally, because you say it's been once you've taken a geometry class. I, I, I know they're not the same, I just thought they were the same. <laughs> but, yeah. So... Um... If you have side A, angle A, side B, angle B, side C, angle C, the law of sines says that sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of, ang uh, of angle B over side B equals sine of angle C over side C. That's the law of sines, and it's helpful if you have, if you want to work out um, angles, like in this situation, we have two sides and an angle. We have three sides and an angle, but we only need two sides and one of these angles. We can work out any other angle we want. Back seating to, to the max? No, you're good, Bob. Uh, so that's how I think we should get this last angle here. Uh, or the angle like up here, which is also the angle over there. Uh, so I would set up the equation um, sine of 135, let's name this angle C, I guess, um, over 135, puts on the opposite side, 12.3, equals sine of C over the side length, 10. Now we solve this equation for C, multiply each side by 10. So you get 10 sine 135 over 12.3 is equal to sine of C. Then let's we'll take the arc sine of each side, or 
inverse sine. Um, I write arc sine. Actually, I should explain. Arc sine of x and inverse sine of x are the exact same thing, just different notations. I don't like inverse sine like that because um, it gets confusing with one over sine. So I tend to avoid it. But these are the same like notations. If you're more used to one, it's fine. I'm going to use arc sine though. And this is something that we can now plug into the calculator. And that'll be our, that'll be the angle here or the angle here, which you then need to do 180 minus that to get the angle up here for the same like flip side supplementary angle reason. Okay. Oh yeah, I I, I never remember, remember the conventions with what's uppercase and what's lowercase. You have to be written using Greek letters. I mean, that would avoid the. the I mean, I guess there's capital Greek letters too. Um, I assume Tom is. I have like the the math symbols in my about section, and also there's also command. So if someone wants to like copy paste math symbols in chat, it makes it a little bit easier. It's still a giant pain, but yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's plug in what I wrote on the board, and let me know if I lost you at any point there, um, Bandit, because I I know I just threw a couple of things at you there. Still here? Okay, good. Okay, that's in ratings. So thirty five point oh nine is. We get 35.09 up here, which means we have 35.09 up there. Running out of space here. <laughs> so then we do 180 minus that, and that's our bearing from the north. So let's go plug that into Wolfram Alpha again. You already memed it? Oh god, okay. Uh, so I'd say that's 144.91 for the bearing part. And displacement we already got, which was um, 12.3. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Let me know if there's anything that Uh, what was it? What was the bearing or the displacement or both? Now, Tom, uh, if, if someone asks the same type of questions a lot of times in a row, then I might say I will get paranoid that. But if they're asking one question, like, I'll just give them the answer. It, I, um, if someone just if they ask the same exact type of question a bunch of times in a row, then I'll be like, okay, you need to show me some, uh, something more here. But you know, if you don't get a concept, how else do you ask a question about it? Uh, I'll show the whiteboard again. So um, uh, what were you asking? What was it about? <laughs> Dang it, Bob. <laughs> 45 de degrees. It's something an obtuse angle. Lesson learned. Ugh. Uh, 35.09. I probably wrote it way too small. Um, let me, um, let's 
So I used the law of sines to eventually get this, and I plugged this whole thing into a calculator. And it came out to be... Uh, Thirty-five point oh nine degrees, written a bit more legibly, and so that's the angle at the top of the triangle. Wait, was it? yeah, and then you had to do one eighty minus that to get the bearing. Wait, what did I just do? I don't know what hotkey I just pressed. Oh, I think I know the hotkey I pressed. Okay. Do it again. Okay. Oh yeah, nine would be a weird angle to get here for for sure. Try some other problems I have. Sounds good. Um. Thanks for for the question, by the way. Oh, and before Bob yells at me, I should give out saves. No worries, Bandit. I'm going to be honest, I'm probably going to wrap the stream up here in a couple of minutes. So, um, you can check posting my Discord still, and me or someone else can get back to you. But um, if I'm not around, I send you over. I, I believe Zach will be streaming tomorrow. E to the 2i Pi and Pen Center. Uh, so wait, I give a save to Bob. Uh, let's give a save to Tom. Then who else? Fembox. Right. New emote unlock too? Hell yeah. Love to see it. Okay, I think we're caught up on saves. Oh, thanks for, for the follow, Tom. Okay. Um, I can feel a headache setting in. See, so yeah, I, I think I should call it for the day. Um, on YouTube, I'm going to cut the stream off, but on Twitch, let's look for a raid. If we can help it. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm going to cut the YouTube stream off here. If you're on YouTube, I appreciate you. I'll be back next time on Tuesday. So goodbye, YouTube.